breakout session and you are not able to break out to there after class, be sure that you have your friends uh, or peers or even us, the instructors, friended. That way you can break out into the live session afterwards. To friend us, you'll just click on uh, any avatar that you see and click the little plus person icon up above them. That way, if you are unable to get into the breakout session, you will have a way in. And not only is it awesome to, you know, friend your peers, but you also get to grow and connect with them on a more personal level. Making friends in the class is what is part of what this is all about. Creating a connection, creating a network is really good for job opportunities in the future. Yep. Can everyone hear me okay? Can I get some emojis if you guys are hearing my audio? Awesome. Okay, we're going to get started in two minutes. Just want to give everyone an opportunity to join. So give them a few seconds to do that. Awesome. All right. Okay, we'll give it one more minute uh, while we're waiting, getting everyone in. Try and space yourselves out. So try not to bunch up um, and try and find a seat that you're going to be comfortable with throughout today's session. So yeah, we don't want you moving around too much just because that distracts some of the other students that are in the space today. Okay. Live stream people, if you could hear me. Okay, yep. All right, everyone's hearing me good over there as well. It's good to hear. Great. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Give it. All right, okay, last round of emojis. Everyone hear me clearly? Emojis, guys? Okay, sweet. Awesome, so today is our second meetup for the Introduction to Unity in c -Sharp Programming course. Uh, so we had our first meetup last week. Uh, the recording is posted on our Google Classroom. In that previous meetup, we went over object-oriented programming, gave a little bit of an overview of the course, over 2D and 3D vector math, and also had one of our alumni come and give a talk uh, with um, Adam, Adam Farouk, who's now a senior technical program manager at Walgreens. Today, what we're going to be covering is diving deeper into the syllabus. So we'll be talking about how to navigate course tools like the Google Classroom, like the Discord, talking about the incentivizations we give to students to help each other out. And then after that, we'll be doing some assessment based on what we learned. And then finally having our other alumni, Justin Chow, who's a project manager at Bad VR, come in and get, give his side of the presentation. Um, so he will be also taking questions from you guys in the audience, uh, and then at the end we'll break out into our breakout session, and you can come up and ask me questions, uh, ask Chriso or any of our other staff members, or just break out and explore the metaverse world as well. So that's how today is going to be structured. As always, today we are going to be live streaming the class to YouTube, uh, which also means it's fully recorded. Uh, if you're not in the Google Classroom already, it's essential that you get in in order to see the 
learning materials, the assignments, get the recording from today. So if you want to get, gain access to that, we need to invite you. Uh, so click on the link above if you haven't done so. Oh, let me add that link. We're in a different world here. Um, but yeah, we'll be sending out an invitation to the Google Classroom afterwards uh, to get signed up for that. Okay. So um, also, this Tuesday is going to be the deadline for enrollment for the course. Uh, so this Tuesday, we basically had the first two weeks free to kind of give you a gist of what it's like learning in the metaverse. And then after that, it's going to be the deadline to enroll. So we'll send out an email to everyone afterwards uh, with the link for that. And then also um, send a reminder on the Google Classroom with the instructions on how to do that as well. All right, great. Okay, so um, first things first, we're going to watch a video today. It's going to be one of the uh, only times we watch a video for instructional purposes. Um, usually the learning, as you guys saw in the first class, is three-dimensional, so we go through animations and whatnot. Uh, today we're going to be going through a video because we're going to be talking about the Google Classroom and how to use it. Uh, in terms of getting your grades back, in terms of doing assignments and submitting, uh, and then also finding the learning material and doing that as well. So we're going to be watching a video today, uh, and the reason is that we want to show you what that looks like from your end, so actually going through the classroom and the Discord on the computer, so we'll be showing a video basically going over that. Traditionally, our classes will not be using any videos other than for the highlights. Uh, so during our live classes like we had last week in the workshop and the live classes for the next uh, eight weeks for the next co for this course will be three dimensional and doing assessment. Um, this session, because we're going over kind of syllabus and setup, we will be showing a video today. The only other time we use video for the other rest of the course is for showing highlights. So every week we put together a highlight reel of the best student projects and then show it off to the class uh, to kind of give some uh, reward and some support for those students that went the extra mile in their projects. But other than that, it will be three dimensional, um, like you guys have seen today. So we'll be watching a video. It's about an 18 to 20 minute video going over everything. And then we'll be doing some questions based on what the video covered to make sure we're all on the same page. After that, we'll jump into the alumni talk uh, where Justin will come in and give his presentation. Okay, is everyone clear on that? Can I get some emojis? Everyone's hearing me clearly. Everyone knows how today's gonna be structured. Awesome. Okay, sweet. All right, so uh, I want to bring up the video for today, um, and then we'll go ahead and watch that. We're going to watch a shorter video at first that will kind of go over the people in Altspace how to get the maximum resolution uh, on your headset so you can see the video clearly. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull that up for everyone. So give me one second. Let me bring that up. All right. Oh, let's go to world editor. And if you have questions from today for today, we have the raise hand button in the bottom right. Uh, so that's how we're going to be able to call on you for questions. We're not going to do it right now because we want to get through some of the content first. But after that, we'll have a question period where you guys can ask whatever you'd like. Okay, so you guys should see a computer in science in VR picture. If you do, give me some emojis. Want to make sure everyone's seeing that clearly. Awesome. All right, I'm moving my hologram out the way, and I am going to portal over here as well. Got stuck a little bit behind. Okay, sweet. So first video is going to be about two minutes, just showing you how to set up high resolution for uh, alt space. So when you watch the video, just watch it the first time, and then after the video finishes, follow the steps. So don't do the steps while you're watching the video. Watch it once and then follow the steps. That's just what we've seen the best way to you know, understand what the video is covering. Um, give me emojis when it does start playing for you so I know you guys are seeing that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and watch and we'll play it in three, oh, here we go. Three, two, one. Here we go. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to increase your video resolution. So first, go to your menu button, then go to settings in the bottom right. Then in the upper left, go to the display tab. Then at the bottom, click on high quality video. Make sure that slider is turned on and is blue. Now it's going to ask you to re-enter the room, which we'll do in a second. So just press OK for now. Then turn your in-world render scale to 1.6. 
press apply. Now go to general. We're going to re-enter the room. Go to re-enter space. And then press re-enter room. And now your video resolution should be much higher and easier to read. So just go back to where you are sitting. And now when you look at the videos, you should be good to go. This is the process for the Oculus Quest, Oculus Quest 2, and for Windows computers. If you're on the go, this might be too big of a performance hit, so you can just toggle it off if your frame rate gets too low and it becomes too... All right, so I'm going to go over what we just said. So you want to go to your menu button in the bottom left, go to settings, go to, um, where is it, display, and then turn on high quality video, okay? And then re-enter the room. Okay, I'll give everyone a second to do that. They get to re-enter, you go to general, and then press re-enter, the top left. All right, I see some people re-entering, awesome. Okay, I'll give everyone a second to do that. I just wanna make sure everyone's gonna see the best quality video. Great. All right. Okay, hopefully everyone has done that. Okay, I'm still seeing some re-enters. All right, okay. So this next portion of today is going to be that longer video. It's gonna be covering the syllabus for the class. It's going to be covering Google Classroom, how to use the Google Classroom for finding your assignments, doing the work uh, and turning it in, and then also finding your grades uh, and seeing announcements for the class. We'll also be going to Discord for the class. Um, so it's going to be a longer video, about 20 minutes. When it does start playing for you, give me some emojis, uh, and then we'll do some questions afterwards, all right? Um, yeah, if you have questions during, send a friend request to our instructor, Jeffrey, or Chriso. Friend request him first, and make sure he uh, accepts your friend request, and then send him a message. So uh, if you just... Send him a message when you guys aren't friends, he won't see it. You want to make sure that you guys are friends first, so send a request, make sure he accepts it, and then send him a message if you have any questions during today's lesson, okay? All right, I'll give you a chance to do that. Yep, and then after that 20 minutes, we'll go into some questions and then also uh, do some assessment. So we'll take questions from you guys and do some assessment uh, based on what you learned to make sure everyone's on the same page in terms of how this class it's really structured and works, okay? All right, is everybody clear on that, emojis? All right, so I want you guys to give me some emojis when it does start playing for you, so I know you guys are all seeing it. And let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and we'll see it in three, two, one. Hello everyone and welcome to our Introduction to Unity in c -sharp programming course. If you're here today, that means you're officially enrolled in the course. This is going to be our final course roster, so I'm so happy that you decided to join us and start learning how to build in the metaverse. So what I want to go over today is kind of walking through some of the course tools and teaching you guys how to get started, uh, making sure we're all on the same page. We had our first class last week and our first assignment, which was due um, last night. But if you haven't done it, we'll be extending the deadline just because some people are still getting situated. Uh, we do have a few late joiners, so don't worry if you haven't turned it in. We won't be taking off late points, so no worries there. Now, this is our Google Classroom. This is our central hub for the class. So this is where we're going to be distributing assignments, learning materials, posting our recordings from our meetup, distributing the links to attend our meetups. Uh, so make sure that you're constantly staying up to date with this uh, and checking what we have available here. Now, the classroom has three central tabs. It has a stream tab, the classwork tab, and the people tab. The stream tab is what we're on right now. This is where you're gonna get all the announcements for the class. You can see here we have uh, an announcement I'm talking about announcing the class we're having today with the links. And you can also see upcoming assignments in the top left. You can see we have our RCP meetup, 
uh, due by tonight and also the setup assignment because I'm recording this on Friday. So uh, you can stay, come here, stay up to date with any announcements I'm sending out. You can also write any comments here. Uh, those comments will be class comments, so they're available to see from the class. And I'll also be able to respond to them as well. Uh, so the next tab we should look at is the classwork tab, which is mo the, probably the most important tab and the one you're going to be using most frequently. So the classwork tab is where you're going to find all of our course information. So you'll find our course info material at the top. You'll find a week by week breakdown on the assignments, what you're going, the learning material, the recordings, optional troubleshooting videos. So you can see we have it breaking down week by week. So week zero, week one, week two. We're going to be releasing the full 10 weeks uh, after, I think, next Tuesday, just because we still have some students that are in that one week uh, free trial that just joins a little bit late. And we don't want to release all the material and then, then decide not to join us. So we're going to be releasing this next coming week soon. So week three. And then after that, we'll be releasing the next 10 weeks. Uh, so that is how it's broken down on a week by week basis. So basically, based on what week you're, you're, we're on right now, you want to look at that week's topic and then do the assignments, the learning materials and use the optional resources available. So week zero was last week. That's the first week of our course. Right, so that was the getting started assignment. You also had the optional recording for our uh, workshop we did that you could have checked out. Um, so the getting started, as long as you've watched the recording or attended our first class, you're good to go. You don't need to turn anything in. I also posted the first class recording under that week. And that's how each week's gonna go. Once we have our classes, I'm gonna be posting the recording from that class under that week's topic at the very top in case you missed anything or want to review what we went over. So week one is, or week zero is done. Now we move to week one. And again, this is what was due before today's class. And we have the RSVP for Meetup 2 assignment. We're basically going to be posting these RSVP Meetup, meetup assignments every time before we have a class. And here you'll be able to see, let's go to view assignment. You'll be able to see the live stream link if you want to attend our class through live stream or the information on how to attend live in 3D slash VR through Altspace VR. You can kind of think of Altspace VR as the Zoom for VR meetings. Um, so you can attend on your computer, if it's a Mac or Windows computer, or of course live in virtual reality. Live stream, all you need to do is click on the first link when the event starts and you'll be able to see the live stream. For attending in 3D slash VR, we wrote an article on how to do that. Uh, over here you can check out. If you are an experienced Altspace user, uh, you can go just directly to the last link here, open it, and then press RCP. Now notice that it says event not found. In order for you to see it, you have to already be signed into Altspace. So if you sign into Altspace here, sign in with my account. Once I sign in with my account, you can see that I'm able to have the event page and press the RSVP button. So the only issue, the only difference if you attend before is all you need to do is click on the event code and then paste it into Altspace or type it in if you're in VR. Uh, but in order to see the event page, you already have to be logged into Altspace or else it's gonna give you that error message page. So you can either do that after you click on the link or before, and you'll be able to see the page, get the event code, and then enter the Altspace event. Uh, and we have an article going through it if you need more detailed instructions as well as video instructions. So a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and then just message us if you have any questions, we'll be able to help out as well. So that's how we're going to be distributing the meetup links for each week. We're basically going to be having an RCP assignment uh, under each week's topic with the live stream link and also the Altspace event link and instructions if it's your first time attending in Altspace. So you don't need to submit anything for that assignment. You just need to attend. Uh, so make sure you do that and you're prepared before each week. We'll probably post these at least two days before our meetups. Then we have our assignments. So this is our setup assignment where we had to install Visual Studio and we had to install Unity as well as join our class Discord. So here you can see a full description of the assignment. You can see the due date in the top right. You can see where you turn in your work. You can also add a private comment Private comments are just visible to you and me. So that's why they're private. Class comments are what you can add below and those are visible to all students. So it's very simple. You click on the assignment. It gives you a detailed breakdown of what you need to do. So by step one, step two, step three. First step is join Discord. So click the link below to join Discord. This is our universe hub. If you wanna click that link, I recommend downloading the Discord desktop app so you can get notifications when we post. It's also much easier to stay in touch. So go ahead, and I think we put the link to download Discord um, in the assignment. If not, I'll go ahead and attach that link as well. So once you do that, continue to Discord. 
Let's see if I can just hop into Discord here. Um, bring my Discord over here. So this is our class Discord. Now, when you first click on that link and you join if you're a new user, you want to go to the welcome channel and press on the C button. Okay, that's going to give you access to all the Intro to Unity uh, Discord channels here. Now, this Discord is the Discord for all of our classes. So we have one central Discord for all of our classes that you'll gradually gain access to as you go through the classes. So you can see that we have our Intro to Unity Discord here. That's basically the category. And then you have like individual channels under it, which are kind of subtopics. Um, we have our general chat for all universe students. We have general resources. We have um, voice channels. Then we have our different class uh, channels as well. We have VR world building. We have VR app development, etc. So you'll gain access to those as you go through the courses. All right. So for us, you only need to pay attention to the intro to Unity chat. So here it's pretty simple. You have an announcements channel. We'll be sending out announcements to you guys. A general chat just for general talking, help for getting questions answered, introductions for introducing yourself, feedback for giving us feedback, etc. Um, now, the other channels are like driver project and plain programming uh, challenge. These are channels where you're actually going to be posting your projects and sharing them with the class. So we'll go through that a little bit later, but all your projects you're going to be making for this course are going to be posted onto Unity Connect. And we're going to show you how to do that. But that's going to allow you to host your games on the web so that no one needs to download those games in order to play them. As long as you have a link, people are able to play them. And you're basically posting your assignments each week into these specific Discord channels so that other students can play, give you comments and feedback. Uh, so it's a really cool system we have in place. So each week you'll be posting your project and we have optional challenges that you can do to boost your grade and learn more Unity. Resources is where we post resources, random, etc. cetera. Uh, Starboard, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is basically a way to reward students for helping out other students and win cash prizes at the end. So really cool. We've seen a lot of good feedback from it. But make sure you use the Discord. We're on there a lot, um, more, than, uh, more than we should. We're basically on there um, most hours a day. For me, I sleep uh, probably between hours of 1 to 9, so um, maybe 1 to 10. Uh, so just post questions on there and we'll be able to help you out. Uh, it's a really fast way of posting screenshots, of jumping on Discord calls if needed. So yeah, make sure to check that out. All right, so now that we understand the Discord a bit, let's go back into the Google Classroom. So join the Discord. You also want to change your nickname on the Discord to match your Google Classroom name. So you'll find your Google Classroom name by clicking on the top right where your Google account is. So mine is Nicholas Barone. And then you want to go to Discord and you want to go to the top left. Let's go edit server profile. There we go. So that button and then change your nickname to whatever your Google Classroom is. So my name is Nicholas. I've already said my name, but change it to your Google Classroom name. That way we know who you are and we're going to keep you in the Discord. We have some students that are no longer part of the class uh, because they didn't submit their uh, course enrollment fee in time. So we're going to have to remove them. So make sure you do this so we don't accidentally remove you. If that happens, just send us a message and we'll get you back up and running. But um, yeah, just be easier if we know who's who. Uh, that way we don't accidentally remove anyone that should have stayed. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that. Um, next thing, introduce yourself in the introductions channel. Then we're going to follow the steps to get Unity and Visual Studio installed. So that's kind of step one for starting our journey into the metaverse. Uh, I've attached a link here. So we're going to click on this link. And this is going to open up the Unity Learn uh, site, which is a site officially by Unity, um, where they provide tools and coursework on how to learn Unity. Um, so we're going to go ahead and follow the instructions here. So this is basically going to walk you through how to install Unity and how to install Visual Studio. So Unity, as you guys know, is the game engine. Visual Studio is the uh, in integrated development environment, or IDE. Uh, that allows you to program and write scripts in. So we're going to be using that. It comes integrated with Unity. Make sure you follow these steps. If you've installed Unity separate from Unity Hub and try and install Visual Studio uh, separate as well, you're going to be having a lot of issues when they're trying to communicate documentation. Um, so make sure that if you've done it separately before, delete that and then reinstall it here. Or you can just add this as another version. You don't have to delete your version if you don't want to. But you should use 2020.3. LTS, which is the version that is most up to date and the latest long term support version from Unity, which means it's going to be supported by them for at least two years. Uh, and then you want to follow the steps to also install Visual Studio. It's a module 
which means that you can add it as you're installing Unity. So it goes through pretty in depth here. Um, and yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. All right, so follow those steps. Once you get those installed, you want to take a screenshot. So take a screenshot of your Unity and Visual Studio. You can take it of Unity Hub if you want. I just need to see Unity 2020.3 and Visual Studio installed and you'll be good to go. Once you have the screenshots, you want to go to your work in the top right of the assignment. You want to press Add and then you want to press File. And this is where it's going to open up your File Explorer. You want to find where you save those screenshots. So let's see if I can quickly have a little demonstration. Press Browse. And then once you attach them, so let's just say I want to attach this. Once you attach them, then you want to press, let's see it load, turn in. All right, it's not enough to just upload it. You have to press turn in or else we're not gonna know you submitted. So press turn in, turn in your assignments, and there you go. Now, this is an important note. You can resubmit assignments. So uh, you can unsubmit the assignment and resubmit it if you want to redo work or you made an update to your project. So that's always an option. Also, feel free to leave any private comments on the right, like I said. And that's basically it for that first week. All right, so um, you can see we have a rubric for our assignments at the bottom. So this is out of 100 points. We have 50 points for doing Unity and 50 points for doing Visual Studio. So for more complex assignments, it will have a, a greater breakdown for that rubric. But for this assignment, it's pretty simple. So it's 50 for Unity, 50 for Visual Studio. All right, so we're going to go back now, uh, see the rest of the Google Classroom. So that's the first week. Um, what else do we have? Of course, spamming you guys already did. Now we also have troubleshooting uh, solutions as well. So we've made, we've we taught this course, this is our eighth run teaching this course. So we've seen a lot of different student problems. And that's why I recommend check messaging us because usually the problem is gonna take you an hour. It's gonna take us maybe five minutes because we've seen it about, you know, maybe 10 times already. Um, to help with that process though, we've made a playlist for each week of common problems that students run into and then solutions for them. So you can see they're pretty short. Um, so if you run into a problem, the first thing I would do is go to that week, go to the troubleshooting playlist that's attached under that week topic, check if your problem is listed here, and then follow the solutions in that video. Again, we've done this about eighth time running this course over a two-year period, so we've seen a lot. Uh, so make sure you check that out. And then if it still doesn't work, message on the Discord and we can kind of help out iron any bugs or help with anything that was not covered by that troubleshooting solution. So. That's how you should break down each week. So now we just finished week one. Again, we're not taking out late points if you haven't done it yet. And then we're moving on to week two. So week two is where you're actually gonna do our first projects. So it's our first real assignments. So we have our driver assignment. Again, we're gonna press view assignment. Do driver assignment, which we're gonna follow the tutorial here. So we're gonna go down here. And basically it's gonna have a series of videos and steps you need to follow to build that project. So we're gonna be building a new Unity project every week. And those Unity projects are going to be going over specific concepts. So one week we're going to learn about uh, gameplay. One week we're going to learn about player controls, UI, uh, sound design. Um, so each week is going to have a specific topic it's covering. And then we're going to have projects and challenges to help build those skills and make sure you understand them. So follow these videos. Follow along the steps. So you go next after you've watched this. Oh, I don't want to log in right now. So let's do continue without marking complete. Um, for some reason it's loading this, I'm just gonna go in and click on the top left here to move to the next page. So lesson 1.1, 1 .1, uh, you want to make sure you finish the entire unit. So finishing off one lesson is not enough. There's about five or four lessons in this one. There's sometimes more in other units. You need to finish the entire unit, okay? Uh, so not just one lesson. So watch the videos. Um, I usually recommend watching them first once and then following along the steps after. Okay, so don't try and do it as you go. You're gonna to be too caught up in the nuts and bolts of what you're doing and not understanding what's happening conceptually. So make sure you watch it once all the way through, just trying to understand what's going on and then follow along the steps after. Uh, another thing to mention is there are um, captions here. So you can turn on captions. Let's see if we can, there we go. So you can turn on like captions new if that helps. We're gonna go. Uh, so see, if I see, press see, enter, English. now. Uh, and you can also adjust the speed. So if it's going too fast, you can change the speed well, I to have lower a to help it go slower on to my desktop. Uh, there's also a transcript and they break down the instructions and kind of overall summary at the bottom. So make sure you follow along those steps and use all those resources we talked in the video to make sure you're getting the maximum learning out of them. 
So follow with those steps, right? You're going to get to the end of that unit. You're going to turn in your project. Uh, we show you how to upload to Unity Connect uh, with this. Oh, it might, it's Unity Play now. Uh, my apologies. Um, yeah, Unity Play, which is basically, again, that hosting service for all your projects so anyone can play them. So then you're going to follow along with those steps, build that driver project, then watch the video here that we made explaining how to upload onto Unity Play with WebGL. Turn in the link to your project. Okay, so you're going to get a link like all right. we see here. Uh, so let's see if we can go to the end. We're going to get a link, like if I go to the Discord here, and I go to, say, someone's project, we're going to get a link for our project after following the steps. We want to go back into the Google Classroom, and we want to do add, turn in that specific link, and press add link. Now, if you do any modifications to the project, so you add anything additional, you can get extra points, which is what those last 10 points are for. So if you just do the basic, just follow along the steps, it works, you get 70 out of 80 points. The last 10 points is if you add stuff on top of it. We've seen students add assets, so you can add assets from the Unity Asset Store, add gameplay functionality, change the materials. Um, so the more stuff you add, the better your grade will be, the more complex it really is and, and adds to the gameplay. We highlight the best student projects every week, so you'll get a better sense of what performs higher and how we're grading you uh, based on that. So um, again, basic will get you a 70 out of 80. Advanced will get you up to 80, those last 10 points, okay? So for us, as long as you get a 70% or higher as your overall course grade, you'll pass and get a certificate. But if you want to get those higher grades, you have to do those modifications or do the challenges which we'll talk about. All right, and then also turn it in here. So paste the link, make sure you press uh, turn in. And then also paste it on the Discord. So this is our driver project. You go to driver project, paste that link there. So everyone can play your project. All right, so that's the driver project. Now we also have the challenges. Let's go to challenges. So challenges are optional, so you don't have to do them. You can just do the base version of every project and still pass with a 70. Um, this, you again want to follow the challenge. So press on challenge one, follow the steps again. Challenges are a bit different. They give you basically a broken project and it's your job to fix them by understanding what's going on in the project itself. So they have hints at the end you can use. Do the project if you want. It will get you an extra 20 points. Um, again, if you just do the basic version of it, you get 10 out of 20 points. If you do the bonus challenges they give you, you get five out of, uh, five extra points, so 15 out of 20 points. And if you add more mods, that's where you can get those extra five points and maybe get a 20 out of 20. And then again, you turn it in here, uh, and those are the, how the challenges work. So basically, you can think of each week for you being out of 100 points. If you just do the basic project each week, like the driver assignment, you get 70 out of 100 points. If you add mods to the driver project, the basic project, you can get 80 out of 100 points. And then if you want to get more than 80 points, you have to do the optional uh, challenges, in this case, the plain programming, which can get you between 80 and extra 20 points. So that can add, you know, 90, you can get 90, maybe even 100. So we basically have a lot of um, tiers where if you have the time, you can put the effort in to get a higher score. But if you don't have a lot of time, you can just do the base version and still get a 70 out of 100 each week. And if you do that every week, you'll get a 70 overall and pass the course. Again, we have the troubleshooting solutions at the bottom. And that's basically how the course is broken down. So it's 80% of your grade is going to be projects, and then 20% is challenges. You can also see each week broken down by each topic, like clicking on the left-hand side here. And then you can also see this View Your Work button. So this is where you'll be able to see upcoming assignments, and also you'll be able to see your grade. All right? You can see what's assigned to you, what's been returned, and what you're missing. All right, so... That's all I want to cover for this week. Let me know if you have any questions on what we covered. We're going to do some questions now back in all space covering what we talked about. Um, but I'm so excited to see you guys join us in the metaverse. We have so much interesting stuff planned. Uh, working on new content for you guys. I won't say yet, uh, but we're really excited to launch some more courses out uh, and see what you guys create. We've seen awesome creations from our students. We've seen people go on and work at great positions um, like Supernatural, which got acquired by Meta uh, Project. Um, Pat VR, uh, Walgreens, 10% acceptance rate to Oculus Launchpad, which we talked about. Um, so yeah, I hope you will be part of our next generation of students making an impact in an industry which is vastly growing. 
It's a really great time to get into this whole metaverse. Um, and soon we'll be joining your metaverse world with the class, hopefully, um, and exploring. So I'm glad you guys join us along for this journey. And I'm, we're with you here all the way. We're a resource for you guys. And let's get started. Let's build. All right. Emojis when that finishes, everyone. Emojis. Awesome. Great to hear. Okay, so before we go on, I do want to say for those that are still joining us right now, we are going to be doing another raffle today. So we're going to be giving out the Introduction to Unity and c -sharp Programming course to one entry here today. Uh, so if you want to be entered into that raffle, go ahead and click on the link above and enter your information. Or if you're on the live stream, click on the link in the live chat or video description as well. Tony, our instructor who's monitoring the live stream, is going to be posting that both on the live chat and also in the video description. All right, so if you want to be entered into the raffle, do that. I'll give everyone a second to do so. You do have to stay till the end of today's session to be able to claim the prize, okay? So we are going to be um, announcing the winner at the end. And if we call your name and you're not here, we're going to be giving it to the next person. So make sure you stay till the end if you want to be eligible to win the raffle so that if we do call your name, you'll be able to claim it. Okay? Awesome. Give everyone a little bit of time to submit their entries. Also, if you submit your entry, you're going to get access to the recording from today that I mentioned before and be able to get the invitation to our Google Classroom, uh, which is just what we went over, which has really all our central information, um, the syllabus, the assignments, the learning materials. Uh, so you definitely want to get access to that if you want to continue down this Unity and VR development journey. Um, so make sure you enter your information above. We're only going to be inviting those people and entering those people that sign up today into the raffle and into the Google Classroom. So you want to make sure to uh, be able to win, enter the raffle or get access to the Google Classroom. Okay, after that, we'll move into some questions. So I still see some people signing up. All right. Okay, we're still getting some submissions. Yep. If you want to get into the raffle or go classroom, please do that. All right. All right, let's take some questions while everyone looks like some people are still signing up, but let's take some questions while they're doing that. So let's go to uh, Nathan. Nathan, do you have a question? Yeah. So for the assignment, we post it on the Google Classroom, and then we have to post it on the Discord as well? Yes. Great question. And I also want to address a question from the live stream. So yeah, you want you first place you should post it is to the Google Classroom, because that's where us instructors will grade your assignment. Uh, so you want to definitely post it to the Google Classroom first. And then you also want to post it on the corresponding Discord channel so that other students can be able to play your game and give feedback. Uh, so it's really a great kind of social outlet for people to see your game and your creations. Yep, it's a great question. Another question Another question I saw on the live stream. Um, if you have Unity already installed or Visual Studio, I would recommend deleting that version and following along our steps that we teach exactly. A lot of students are going to try and retrofit their existing Unity version, add Visual Studio, and sync it together on, by their, on their own, or sync their existing Visual Studio install to Unity. Do not do that. You're going to have a ton of issues. It's probably the most common problem we get in the first week is people are like, oh, well, I already have Unity installed. Let me just add Visual Studio to it. There is an integration with Unity and Visual Studio that's set up on Unity Hub. So you don't have to deal with that. And you want to make sure you go through that way, or else you're going to have a lot of problems in the future where there's not going to be good syncage, you're not going to get IntelliSense or autocomplete or underlining. So you want to make sure to follow the instructions we give out in the Google Classroom exactly. Do not deviate from them. This is one of the most common problems we see. You want to download Unity Hub, download the Unity version through Unity Hub, and then add uh, Visual Studio as a module to your Unity version as you're installing it. Okay, so the instructions will go through that step by step with photos and text instructions to make sure it's clear. But you want to make sure you're following those instructions and not trying to do it on your own. If you don't do that, if you try and deviate, I would recommend 
uninstalling and reinstalling, but this time following those steps exactly. Uh, we have troubleshooting videos also on the Google Classroom that we made that walk through some of the student problems we've seen from running this course over eight times now. Uh, so make sure to also use those as a resource. And then if you still have problems, our Discord is available where us instructors can give you immediate assistance. Okay, let's go to Champ. Champ, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, well, I um, downloaded uh, Unity and Blender. Um, I'm, 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 I'm in between one or two options. I, I don't know which one is the best one. Uh, the 2020.3 or the 2021 um, new version that I see on the site. Uh, I think yes. a lot of people are, are, are um, saying the 2020.318 is the better one. Um, but uh, from your from your um, standpoint, which one do you think? Yeah, so we recommend using 2020.3. Uh, it's an LTS version, which is a long-term support version, which means Unity is going to be updating that version and keeping it, uh, yeah, keep keeping it up to date for the next two years now. Uh, so you want to use that LTS version 2020.3 in order to ensure that your project, the projects you build, uh, will be continually updated for by Unity. And that's the reason why we use that version because it is an LTS version, and that's the version we recommend to our students. Not use, you know, 2019.4 or 2018.4. Uh, we recommend using 2020.3. And if you already have Unity installed or uh, Visual Studio installed, but you didn't do it through Unity Hub or you didn't do it through our instructions, again, I recommend redoing it from our point, uh, from our uh, steps, or else you're going to have problems in the future. Uh, just from our experience of teaching like 500 students going through this process, it's always like, oh, I already had Unity installed and I tried to install Visual Studio in, in accordance and sync it, but it's it's way too difficult. Unity Hub handles that uh, configuration for you. We also teach Blender in a separate, separate, separate course. Yeah. Uh, let's go to, and let me check uh, live stream questions as well. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Kiwi. Hi. Um, yes. So I use the Unity Hub to download 2020.3.9 F1. And um, I downloaded all three, including the Visual Studios, but then Visual Studios never popped up. Um, I did, I saw your um, comment in Discord where you told me to go ahead and delete uh, the 2020 from the Unity Hub and then reinstall it. I did that, but um, whenever I go to add modules, it's, it's already showing that Visual Studios for Mac, which I'm using a MacBook, is already yep. installed, but it's yep, not, yep. you know, popping up under, I guess, a different application. Yeah, so basically, you want to look for Visual Studio. Uh, it's a separate application than Unity. Um, so Visual Studio is an integrated integrated development uh, environment, so IDE, and you should be able to find it uh, under your Applications tab. So it is a separate application. Uh, you should see it under the Applications tab. So once you finish installing it, go to that uh, folder and then double click on it, and it should open. So basically, what happens is that you downloaded that version of Unity. It sounds like you also downloaded the module, which is good. Um, not sure if you went to the Applications tab and looked for Visual Studio to see if it was already there, because it's not just going to automatically open. Um, so you might have not done that and then uninstalled Unity, but that Visual Studio application still remains. So that's why when you reinstall it, Unity is detecting that, oh, you already have Visual Studio installed. Um, so I would look for that application. It should be in your Applications tab. I would open it. It should be there. If not, you need to delete not only the Unity version, but also delete the Visual Studio uh, because it sounds like you installed it but never deleted it. So that's why I can't reinstall Visual Studio is because it's already on your computer. Uh, but yeah, follow up on Discord if there's any questions there. For Discord, when there's questions, the best thing to do is attach screenshots. Uh, just from our instructor perspective, it's hard to not really see what's going on on your computer. So any screenshots be much appreciated for us to get an understanding of what you're seeing. All right, let me see on live stream, any questions? Live stream people. If I already have Unity and Visual Studio through Unity Hub, should I uninstall and reinstall? If you've already done that um, and you're able to open up Unity and Visual Studio, 
when you did it through Unity Hub, that should be fine. Just send us the screenshots, but just make sure that you did the steps uh, that we showed because we don't want you to have like a, a, a desync between the two apps and that's going to cause issues down the line. All right, I'll take another question. Let's go to Viper. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, so I have a quick question. Um, I know you're saying that we have to go follow those instructions um, for you to go through the hub for Unity and Visual Studio. I already have Visual Studio installed and configured. But you're saying I have to uninstall that. Now, once I go through the hub and have it reinstalled, how is that going to affect my current settings? Or is, is that going to have an effect on it? Or just reloading my settings will work? I just want to make sure I don't want yeah. to screw up my current configuration because I do this for a living. <laughs> so I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to screw up any of that. I have Visual Studio and just, uh, just in a sense, you, you're, you're probably like a programmer that used the Visual Studio and now is using Unity for the first time. Is that, is that what I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So a good point. So Visual Studio is not just specific to Unity. Uh, it is a IDE, so it's basically used for any type of software development. Um, so if you have Visual Studio already installed, there are specific Unity components that you want to install with Visual Studio. Um, I see what you're saying. Uh, you could try and do it manually, just like a much uh, more risky process. Basically, what you want to have installed, what I would try for you is I would install the Unity version. It's probably going to automatically detect that you have Visual Studio installed. And when you try and add the module, hopefully it should give you an option to add the documentation for that. Uh, because basically, you have Visual Studio installed, but there's also specific Unity documentation and libraries and classes that you also need to install with Visual Studio so that it can do things like autocomplete and IntelliSense uh, to make that programming much easier and unique to Unity. So um, yeah, for your case, I completely understand if you're like, you know, program for a living, you have settings within Visual Studio, you set up, and now if you have to delete it, you have to redo those settings, which would be definitely annoying. So I think in that case, because there's kind of that switching cost, I would say install Unity 2020.3, 20, um, see if they give you an option in the modules to add a documentation. There is a documentation uh, module, make sure that's checked. And then try, you'll see this a bit later, if you want to do a quick test, try opening up like a script, maybe going a little bit ahead in the material, and then seeing if you have any issues with that. Um, we do have some videos under the uh, either week one or week two troubleshooting, where it shows like what happens if you don't have IntelliSense, which you could try. So for you, I'd say, because you're a programmer, try doing the Unity install, um, adding the documentation module, and then going along with the material. And then if you do have an issue, uh, messages in the Discord. Worst case, we will have to do like a reinstall and then maybe just like reset configurations that you had over there. But hopefully, it won't come to that. So basically, yeah, but important point: Visual Studio is you're going to be learning it. Our class is your first time for doing Unity development, but it's an integrated development environment that's useful for any type of software development. It's probably one of the most popular IDEs there are. Uh, another one's Eclipse, which is really good. Um, but yeah, it's um, this type of the kind of skills you're going to be learning and using Visual Studio is going to be important not only for Unity development, but just programming in general. Um, you can use other IDEs or text editors um, or code editors. For example, I use Visual Studio Code, but for the first course, use Visual Studio, especially if you're new to things, uh, just because the documentation and the uh, interface we walk through is Visual Studio. So you want to make sure that you have the easiest time following those steps. Basically, follow, try and trust us and don't try and veer off too much from the path because everyone wants to be a hero, but uh, we see that cause problems, especially as you guys are just getting into this. You want to limit kind of the variation you guys have. All right, I know we have some other questions. I'm just looking at the time. Uh, I'll take one more from, uh, let's go to uh, Little. Uh, yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so I just had a question. Um, do uh, is there anything that you can recommend in terms of uh, like a virtual desktop or workspace, just like for collaboration's sake? In uh, in in VR in the metaverse? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the context with this programming, like if we wanted to sit down with another person and you know work yeah. together, like I don't know. You know yeah, yeah. In like a virtual workspace, and if we have questions with each other, we can like you know, it's just a lot easier yeah, to work yeah. in a group situation while learning sometimes. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. So um, there's a few things we have for that. So one, it, one is like, so for kind of the live learning component, we have obviously these weekly classes where you can come ask questions to me. We have breakout sessions after where you can form connections with other students and go up to the instructors as well. So that's what happens during the live classes. We also have office hours that we host usually after the class where one of our instructors will hop on Discord and answer any student questions. Um, so that's a good place where like you basically have an instructor there. You can ask any questions or walk through any problems, excuse me, you're having. Um, and yeah, the Discord's always open throughout the week to get any questions answered. Um, yeah, in terms of virtual collaboration, the Metaverse, the best platform is uh, Horizon Workrooms. It's the one we use for all our meetings. From what we've seen, there hasn't been a huge pull. Like we've had kind of open work hours. There hasn't been a huge pull from students to kind of attend those and just hang out. Uh, on the Discord or in like a, a workroom or all space environment. Uh, for most of our students, they kind of want to just go in where there's a lot of value and we have like kind of set agenda uh, and then get that value and then, you know, kind of work their own and get help uh, from time to time on the Discord and do our office hours. But um, we haven't seen a pull for persistent space where everyone just comes in. Um, now, uh, we do have uh, kind of social events and the great thing about this platform we're on right now, all space is it's a persistent metaverse platform. So you're going to be kind of seeing the same students that are in their class or in, you know, we're alumni from the universe in different events. Uh, some of our alumni are kind of the, one of the most prolific world builders that are on this platform. So Nira, uh, Artsy, who are both working for NFT Oasis now, um, you're going to see a lot of their work basically in the worlds and events you see uh, around Altspace. So it's a very small community, which is nice because it's very close knit. Um, so hopefully you'll be kind of seeing some universe people throughout your journey around this platform. Um, yeah. Workrooms, though, if you want to do virtual collaboration, is the best recommendation for that. All right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the assessment for today. Okay, so I'm going to bring up that and get rid of my hologram here. Again, make sure you sign up for the raffle because we're we'll going to be going into uh, the alumni talk after this. Please click on the link above or link in the video description if you haven't done so already. All right, I'm gonna bring up my quiz here. Hopefully you guys know how this works. It's pretty straightforward. If you don't, all right, here we are. Okay. So the way this works with people in alt space is you answer the questions A or B based on what you think the answer is. I'm gonna go ahead and Oh, okay, you guys are voting. Nice. Uh, for the people in the live stream, we're dropping a link to do the quiz as well in the live chat and video description. Right click on the link and go through the questions through that. Don't directly click on it because you'll get off the live stream. But yeah, it should be pretty straightforward on how this works. Uh, first question is, do you need to have a VR headset in order to attend sessions? All right. All right. Here to vote. Oh, I'm going to go and reveal. Uh, do you need a VR headset in order to attend our sessions? The answer is no. So you do not need a headset in order to attend our classes. Uh, all our classes are live streamed to YouTube, uh, which means they're also fully recorded in case you miss anything. You can attend through there. And then you could also attend on the metaverse app so on your mac or windows computer you can actually uh, attend um in the metaverse by using those and you can kind of see who's doing that today uh, some of you guys are on your pcs i can just kind of tell the ones that have you know, the arms down um so you don't need a vr headset in order to attend our classes we make it as accessible as possible to make sure everyone is able to join something interesting though that we've seen is that we'll see at the beginning like when you go to our workshops uh, about 80% of students are attending on the live stream and only 20% are in the metaverse. And then as the class goes through, you know, during our first class, our first kind of class with our official roster, it will be 50-50 on the live stream. So 50 on the and 50 percent on the metaverse. And then by the third course, it's 80% in the metaverse and only 20% on live stream. So what we notice is as students kind of get more immersed and kind of see the immersion and, and benefit of being in the metaverse, they'll go out and download the app on their computers uh, or 
you know, get a headset in order to participate in this kind of superior learning experience. So uh, we recommend generally at the first, you know, stay kind of low commitment by going through whichever method you think is the best. And then as you see yourself getting more involved, then going out and, you know, figuring out how to download, install the uh, platform and be able to attend your computer or go out and get headset um, as you kind of see yourself committing more to this career path. But yeah, that's kind of an interesting stat. So at no point in our classes do you need um, to have a, a headset in order to attend the live classes. As you can attend on live stream or on your computer. And yes, you can also attend in VR. All right, so how do you turn in assignments? How do you turn in assignments? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. 89%, so yeah, adding your files to your work section. Do not write the link in the comment section. Um, we're not gonna see that you completed it, uh, so we need you to add it, your file to your work section, and this is a very common thing. People will add the file and then forget to press the Submit button. After you add the, add the file, you I need one more step where it's actually pressing the Submit button so we get notified that you submitted and we can grade your work. Don't add the link to the comment section uh, and make sure to submit the, your work by pressing that button or else we won't be able to grade you. Okay, let's go to the next question. So what is not due in our setup assignment? All right, what is not due in our setup assignment? All right, I'm gonna go and reveal in three, two, one. Yep, so the answer is do the driver project. That is not due in our first assignment. So this first assignment is just getting yourself set up. So joining the Discord, installing Unity uh, Hub and the Unity version Visual Studio. And then our driver assignment is gonna be due uh, this coming Friday, okay? so. What you need to focus on for right now is installing Discord, doing uh, installing, not install, yeah, actually installing Discord, installing Discord, joining the Discord, installing Unity Hub, installing U the Unity version and Visual Studio. And then once you do that, start working on the driver assignment, which is going to be due this Friday. Okay. So if you have questions throughout, again, you can either Discord message us or email, and we'll be happy to help you get set up. All right, but this is not due in that first assignment. The driver assignment is a separate assignment, and that's going to be your first kind of real project uh, with the course. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. So where do you have to turn in your assignments? All right, I'm going to go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. Yep, so the answer is Google Classroom and the appropriate Discord channel. So again, Google Classroom is where you need to submit first in order for us to see you submitted and be able to grade you. And the Discord is where other students will be able to see your projects and play them. Okay, so you need to submit it on both. Don't just submit on Discord. Another thing to mention for the quiz system, so once you vote once, And then uh, go uh, go ahead and vote. If you re-enter the room, you won't see the yellow, little yellow sign when you vote, but you'll be able to tell if you voted by seeing the counter above go up. So that's just a little quick tip on the quiz system. Okay, so if you miss a session, can you watch it afterwards?
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal. So the answer is yes. So all of our classes are live streamed to YouTube, which also means they're fully recorded. So you can always go back and watch the recording afterwards in case you missed anything. So we generally recommend you try and make these live classes. That's kind of one of the main value propositions we see in terms of the experiences, in terms of the community building. Um, but in case you miss one or two, you can always just see the recording that we post on the Google Classroom afterwards. Okay, are our future events public or private? All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go and reveal in three, two, one. So the future events are going to be private and reserved for the people that are enrolled in the course. This is gonna be our last public event. In order to attend the rest of the 10 week live course, you need to submit the enrollment uh, by Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. So we'll be sending an email later with instructions how to do that. It's also in the Google Classroom uh, under the week one materials but it's going to be a private event. So that means we're gonna be distributing the link to you guys, to the official course roster, and that's how you're gonna be able to join. Okay, and we'll also have a video on the Google Classroom later on how to join those private events. All right, so what version of Unity should you use? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and reveal on three, two, one, 91%. So yes, 2020.3 is an LTS version, so it's long -term support. Don't use the older versions, there's really no benefit to doing so. Uh, so try and use 2020.3 as the Unity version. It's also gonna make sure, make the instructions a lot easier to follow because you'll be using the same version as used in the videos. Something else I mentioned about the courses I mentioned in our first class, I didn't mention this time is that we have a unique policy where if you take the course once, you're always free to enroll in any future course, uh, run of the course for free. So it's kind of take once, be forever policy. So that allows you to not have to put stress on yourself. We realize like people will have things come up in their lives where their schedules change. So for whatever reason, if you can't finish this run of the course, you can always re-enroll in a future run for free. Uh, that also means that you'll always get access to the most up-to-date material, as you can tell, you know, every year Unity is releasing a new Unity version, which means you have to update our materials in order to reflect those new versions. So because you could take any future run for free, you'll also get access to those new material uh, for free as well. Uh, you'll always have access to the material from your run forever. We don't delete any of the material on Discord or Google Classroom, so you have light item access to that as well. Okay, so what is the expected time commitment per week? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. Yep, so the expected time commitment is six to eight hours. So this is a part-time course, it's a part-time commitment. Uh, we realize many of you have full-time jobs or are going to school. Uh, in fact, for us, we've seen from our students that 66% of them are working a full-time job. 11% of them are in university, so we don't aim to make this a full-time commitment. This is something that's designed for you to do on top of a job or on top of schooling uh, and still be able to go through successfully. We structured it so that it's a six to eight hour commitment. We say for the first course, if you have previous programming experience, it's gonna be more along the lines of six hours per week. If you don't have previous programming experience, it's gonna be more along the lines of eight hours per week. So sanction off those kind of times in order to make sure you're able to get the most out of these courses. 
something else to mention is that if you do have previous programming experience, you will still learn a bunch from these courses because it's not only teaching you C-sharp programming, but it's also teaching you the Unity engine and the Unity 3D programming library. We'll be teaching you the Unity engine in terms of doing gameplay mechanics, sound design, UI creation, article effects, animations, and teaching you the Unity 3D library. So understanding classes and functions that are unique to that you'll use in your programming. We don't expect any previous experience for these courses, so you don't have to have any background in programming or Unity to go through them successfully. You do have to be 13 years or older in order to take the course. So that is the requirement in order to go through our courses. You do have to be 13 or older. Awesome. We have people that you know, have been in software engineering for over 20 years at IBM or PayPal or Amazon and still go through that first course and find a lot of value. So only if you have you know, a ton of programming experience and a ton of Unity experience, we recommend enrolling in one of our later courses without taking this one first. All right. Uh, I want to take some questions from the audience because I know I've been talking for a bit. So any audience questions? I'm going to dismiss hand raises. If you do have a question, re-raise your hand just to make sure there's no any lingering questions. All right, any questions? All right, I think we're good. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask that you could always retake a course. Some of you guys here today are probably students from previous runs. I see a few of you in the audience, so that's always an option for you to do. Okay, let's go to John Z. Yeah, hi, I have a question. So when you talk about the commitment of six to eight hours, yeah. does that include the uh, what uh, the Saturday course as well, or does that outside of the, the uh, Saturday commitment? Yeah, that includes the Saturday commitment. Uh, so the Saturday commitment usually is either an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, usually the lessons last for an hour and a half, and then we have a 30-minute breakout, which is optional, but we still see a lot of value in. So if you again, if you don't have previous programming experience, expect about eight hours a week. If you do have previous programming experience, expect about six hours. Now, we do have basically a leveled approach for our courses. So we know some students you know, want to put more time into the courses and want to challenge themselves. That's why we have kind of basic requirements for getting through the course. So as long as you get a 70% or higher, you'll be able to graduate. But if you have extra time and want to challenge yourself, we have additional points rewarded with modifications. So if you modify a project, you get additional points. If you do a challenge, you'll get additional points. If you do a personal project, you get additional points. So for those students that want to go the extra mile and challenge themselves and get a better understanding of Unity, we have those kind of leveling off. I do want to mention this is a common thing from students, right? So if you do all the projects for the course, you just do the base project, you don't do any modifications, you don't do any personal project, you don't do any challenges, you just do the base project, you get a 70% every single week, you'll still graduate. But if you just do that, you're not going to get any additional points. So if you want additional points, just doing the base project will not satisfy those additional points. Additional points are rewarded for modifications. So, you know, if you add new three-dimensional asset there, or if you add new gameplay mechanic, or if you do the challenge, that's how you get additional points. So you can think of it every week, you have a possibility of 100 points. If you just do the base project, you'll get 70 points. If you do modifications to those projects, you can get an additional 10 points, up to an additional 10 points. Then there's a optional challenge, which is out of 20 points that you can do as well. All right, so you have up to 100 points every week, 70 points to do the base project, and that's what you need to do every week to graduate. And then additional points are available for challenges and modifications. I will also mention, modifications, it's very rare you get a 10 out of 10 or a 20 out of 20. You have students that will put 20 or 25 hours into a mod, and we want to reward those students by giving them higher points. So don't feel bad. You didn't get a hot out of 100 that week. There's students that are putting ridiculous amounts of time in, and we want to reward those students by giving them additional points. Okay? So I just want everyone to be clear on that because that's one of the common things we get. It's like, well, I did everything I was supposed to. I did the base project and didn't get 100. 100 is reserved to those students that you know put the extra time in and did a lot more work. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you just do the base project, you're not going to graduate. You will, as long as you just do the base project every single week. We have this leveling system to allow those students that have the extra time, motivation to go above and beyond, get rewarded for work, 
and also make the highlight reel that we show every week, which is really fun. Okay, cool. Uh, not seeing any questions. Oh, let's go to Leslie. Leslie, are you there? I'm here. I accidentally hit my hand. I didn't mean to. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. So this is again a part-time commitment for us. The main thing that we want you to get out of this course, and this is what our students really want from what we've seen, is career opportunities. So 75% of our students we've seen take these courses to explore a new career path. You know, get into the metaverse industry. 25% of them are looking to upskill themselves in their current careers. And we want to provide you with the training, of course, but also the community in order to unlock those opportunities. And that's why we're going to have Justin, an alumni who went through our program and got a job in XR, talk about his process and how he navigated that career path. Our students go on and get jobs at these XR companies. I mentioned that our alumni have got jobs at Meta, we've got jobs at uh, Walgreens, at Bad VR, at NFT Oasis, at Engage XR at Canvas VR, at Continuum, at Burning Man Virtual Concert. Um, so we had students from all kind of backgrounds go into the courses, pick up these new skills, and get jobs in the industry. Um, I mentioned this before during our workshops, but the Oculus Launchpad program, which as far as we know is the best fellowship program for VR developers, is run by Meta, where they basically train you over a period of three months, give you a boot camp, give you support, and then uh, opportunity to pitch for five to $50,000 in grant funding. We only select 100 developers across North America. We had our students go there for the first time, and we represented 10% of all uh, fellowship recipients, which is the most out of any live VR development program that we know of. So we are, our role as a company is to support you guys in getting into this industry, whether it's to get a job in this industry and transition, or get a promotion or lead a project internally within your organization. The way we do that is, Justin's gonna be talking about, is it's a progression, you know? Um, a great example is Artsy came and talked to some of you guys on Thursday. Artsy went through our courses, came from an artistic background, didn't have any background in programming, didn't have any background in Unity, went through our courses, she started building worlds on her own after, and basically licensing those out to customers, and uh, which were consumer and enterprise, um, and then off that kind of business she built, she started networking with the founders of NFT Oasis, uh, who got her on a three-month contract building worlds for them, and then recently got converted to a full-time position at NFT Oasis, which is a really hot Web3 startup. They just raised $4 million in funding. Now, Artsy is a VR world builder for that uh, company. We also have another student, Nira, who's doing the same thing over there as well. So what you should see your career path, especially, you know, in Artie's case, and a lot of you guys are coming from without a background in this industry. It's a progression. It's a stepping a stepping stone kind of process. It's not going to go through the first course or the, the second course and next day you're going to wake up with a job. It's a progressive process where you kind of go through the training, you're building your portfolio, you go through an apprenticeship program, you kind of get a small gig and then that converts into a larger gig. And we help you with that process. So that referrals to companies where our alumni were at, or also we get projects from you know Fortune 500 companies we're talking with right now and government orgs where they want our students to develop programs for them. We have a contract with the city of Newark where we're basically teaching their students, and we have other contracts where we're building metaverse projects for them. We source talent from our community. We give you those opportunities to get something on your resume, get experience working in a professional capacity uh, on Metaverse projects, and you can leverage that to eventually get full-time jobs at you know top companies like the ones I mentioned before. So we help you with the apprenticeship program and also connections with alumni that have jobs in the industry. We have alumni that are now product leads at these companies that need to do their own hiring recruiting. And will ask us to look through our alumni database to see who would be the best fit for that. Um, so we do have an online database to basically keep track of all of you guys and then reach out to you when we find a position that matches your skill set. And that's something you're just not going to find by, you know, watching a YouTube video or going through a discussion forum. Um, in our opinion, kind of as you've probably seen, YouTube and Coursera has made content really accessible. What's not accessible is community. Now that everyone has access to that content, level, the playing field has been more and more leveled. 
will still have to hire at the end of the day. So that means what's happening is a lot of time that people are relying on personal relationships to give that edge and make a hiring decision. If everyone's at the same level, you're going to go with the person that you trust. That's going to give them the edge over the next applicant. So we help with that process by providing you not only the training, but also the community. So you're going to be networking with other students through group projects, Discord, through social events, and also with us. It's going to help you get opportunities in this new industry. Uh, and we've seen it firsthand as the industry has kind of taken off. Students that were trained in here are getting access to opportunities because there's such a demand and such a small supply for this type of talent. We're training kind of the next generation of developers, by teaching them VR development, 3D modeling, AR development. Next, we're going to be teaching NFT development, cryptocurrency, and blockchain development. Um, yeah, okay. Just wanted to cover that there. Uh, what is the grading split for the course? What is the grading split? All right, let's go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. Eighty-seven percent. Yeah, so it's eighty percent projects, twenty percent challenges. So every week, again, it's a hundred points. You could think out, think of it. If you just do the base project, the base weekly project, you get seventy out of eighty points. The last ten points are reserved for modifications that you add on top of that. And the last points are reserved if you want to do the challenge for that week. That's basically where they give you a kind of broken project and it's up to you to fix it and then add additional functionality. Now again, 70 out of 80, if you just do the base project, modifications are things like adding a new gameplay mechanic, adding a new asset, uh, adding um, a shader or animation. And obviously like not everyone's gonna be equipped to do that. Um, we have students that you know will just go off and uh, learn or try new things. And it's sometimes it's crazy. It's like, how, do you, how did you do that early on? Uh, but we want to have a way of rewarding those students that are, you know, doing the extra mile for that. So don't take it as a fence. You get a 70, 80 if you just do the base project. You're still going to be able to graduate with that. But this is just a way of incentivizing those students that do you know, put a ton of extra work into it. Um, and then also the highlights. So every week we'll show the best projects on a video uh, and show it to the class to kind of highlight what the class is doing. Each week, when are weekly projects due? All right. Everybody ready? Okay, let's go and reveal in three, two, one. Yep, Friday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. That is when projects are due. The reason why we do that is because Saturdays are when our meetups are, 4 to 6 p.m., um, 4 to 5.30 if you have to leave. Uh, we want to do the projects before that because we're going to be going over the concepts that we cover during that week during the class. So we want you guys to have at least understanding, done the project, you will be able to do a CESPID, be able to do further learning, uh, but don't just come into the class, you know, kind of uh, without any kind of background in what we would cover. Um, yeah, so that's when projects are due. Challenges are due Sundays, okay? So weekly projects Fridays, challenges Sundays. Now we don't take off late points for any of the assignments. The reason why we don't do that is because we're not here to put any additional stress on you. We realize that this is something that you guys want to do. You know, we're not uh, a high school, we're not um, uh, like middle school, we're kind of watching you guys and being very strict. We realize that this should be an internal motivation for you where you want to get into this career path, want to learn how to develop for the metaverse. Um, and we don't want to cause any unnecessary stress in case something happens in your life where, you know, you do have to submit the assignment a few days late. 
uh, or you do have to take the next run of the course. So you don't, there's no late points, and you could always re-enroll in a future run. If you want to graduate in this run, it's definitely better to kind of stay at that pace, right? You want to continue along that pace weekly so that you don't get to the end of the course and have to do eight assignments uh, before graduation. Um, and that also makes it a lot harder on our instructors, which is not great. Um, so yeah, try and keep that weekly cadence. It's a lot about getting a rhythm of you know, doing the work every week, getting that into your routine uh, so that you don't miss that while, you know, if you have to take a break. We do have breaks throughout the course. So we have uh, two uh, week breaks, uh, one in the middle, kind of one near the end. And that's to allow you to review, refresh, work on mods, personal projects. Do not take those breaks as a time to just do nothing. The most valuable thing is getting into a rhythm. You want to keep that rhythm throughout where you're doing those 68 hours a week that you kind of feel like it's natural for you to do and it's something you could expect to do weekly. We don't take off late points. That's not where we're about in terms of potentially causing anyone stress on what's already going on in their lives. Awesome. So I want to take a few questions before we bring Justin up here. So if you have a question, press the raise hand button. All right. So any questions for me, guys? Questions. Let's see? Questions, press the raise hand button. If not, we can move on. Live stream people, drop your questions in the live chat as well. All right. And I just saw uh, Justin. Okay. So while we're into the live stream, challenges are due Sundays. So challenges are due Sundays, projects are due Fridays. Right, let me bring up the world project projector here. Okay, so everyone can actually kind of see a big screen. Everyone see that? Can I get some emojis? All right, so this is going to be the last opportunity to enter the raffle. We're going to be announcing the raffle winner afterwards. So if you haven't done so already, click on the link above, enter your email address. It doesn't matter if you came from Eventbrite or Facebook or already on the Google Classroom. Um, a lot of people will click on the link in the live chat or video description. This is a way of seeing who attended today. Only the people that attend are going to be eligible to potentially win raffle. So we're going to be announcing the raffle one after. You have to be here in order to claim the prize. If we call your name and you're not here, we're going to get to the next person. So if you haven't done so already, click on the link above or click on the link in the live chat or video description. Um, this is also how we're going to be inviting you guys to the Google Classroom, which we went over, which is where we have our assignments. You definitely want to get access to that if you want to continue learning VR development. Okay, so I'm going to give everyone a second to do that. Going to condition this. And awesome. Again, make sure to sign up. Tony's going to post the link in the live chat again. And also, it's in the video description. Okay. And we'll bring up Justin in a sec. Awesome. Okay. Everyone see the projector behind me? All right. Hopefully everybody is signed up. I think we're ready to move on to the next portion. Again, live should be both click on the link in the live chat. All right. So, uh, Justin, do you want to come up here? You should have megaphone privileges. If not, you can press the raise hand button. Hello. Awesome. Okay. I think we hear you good. Does everyone hear Justin? Justin, maybe you want to just give a quick hello yeah everybody is my voice going audible awesome okay sweet so i just want to give a quick introduction on justin so i've known justin i think for a year and a half maybe even two years now uh when he first went through our program justin started off going through learning vr development and he was super active in the networking and relationship building in addition to the skills i think he always knew he wanted to kind of go into a management level position and wanted to get the technical background in order to be able to communicate with development teams, whatever company he ended up at. So he was constantly going to events, uh, even during the pandemic, which was, I'm sure, not as easy as making relationships in person. I saw him at a few events, 
reaching out to people, making connections, setting up calls. So it's not just, you know, you go through the courses, you turn your assignments, and it's just a job that's going to land in your lap. You also have to be forming connections with people, obviously, in our community, but also people outside by being proactive and, and trying to form relationships and make conversations. I know Justin's going to dive much more into that, uh, but that's just from what I've seen. He's a very active and um, great communicator, which is obviously very helpful. He went through our program, was able to get a job at uh, Bad VR, which is an awesome uh, VR company, especially, you know, this is early on. This is not when the metaverse took off really in the last four or five months. So it was an awesome position to get, especially when the VR field was more nascent. So I'm sure they've grown and are doing awesome things. And Justin has a lot of kind of intel to kind of give us through his process of doing that. But um, yeah, I'll hand it off to Justin. I want you guys to also give some emojis to him. Justin and Adam were nice enough to kind of put this presentation together uh, for us and present it to the class and give back to you guys. Uh, so we're really grateful for him to kind of come back and share his time with us, take questions from you guys. So try and be polite and we'll have some question, an opportunity to ask questions at the end uh, for Justin as well. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna hand it off to Justin and I think Justin can kind of walk you through his journey with uh, getting a job in XR. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas is a... Uh... Synopsis of my timeline it gets better and better every time we do this. <laughs> Getting a lot of mileage out of this presentation. I'm really happy about it. You know, we put this together, Adam and I. Uh, we were figured we go through this course, and it's sometimes difficult. You know, where does it end, right? You you go on in the course and expect, okay, do I really get a job? Do I, where do I go with this? So this is to give you a little bit of a glimpse of the human side to what it's like to go through a job hunting process, uh, even if you started a basic level uh in xr like i did um i'm sure you guys uh well i don't know if i'm not sure but you guys had a chance to listen from adam right uh last week some nods cool um so he probably went over, over his portion uh in thoroughly i hope to give you the same level of detail uh, in mine um so let's just get started oh that's me uh, on the left uh that's me and Climbing one of the mountains here in California, where I am located in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm currently a project manager at Bad VR. It's a uh, startup that specializes in data visualization. Think of your Iron Man Marvel interfaces, um, and, and we kind of do that kind of stuff with data, especially for enterprise level uh, products. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. So Adam should have gone through the left portion. I'm going to go through the right portion, same categories. So once again, I'm a project manager um, at Bad VR. It's a small startup. Uh, currently, it's been around for four years now, almost five. My background is I was an automotive engineer before I started uh, at, a, at a large OEM. And I also taught um, between automotive and XR. I was uh, searching for something to do that was more impactful, meaningful. And that spirit of teaching still carries through today. Uh, and I still like to, uh, you know, dive into a little more educative roles here and there. Uh, my hunt duration, which is something that really of a metric that we estimated, we weren't sure how long would it take to get a job with your background. And for me, uh, I estimated that it took about half a year. So uh, this, this incorporated all the other things I'll talk about soon, um, from start to finish, uh, about half a year. The initiative portion, uh, so my big drive was I went to uh, quite a few competitions. So that would be hackathons, uh, that would be game jams, it would be anything that would get me challenged, I'd say, and uh, a little more positive pressure in terms of deploying skills, um, whether it be technical or soft skills. And then I did a lot of volunteering, actually. Uh, I joined a few groups. Uh, just so that I could understand the landscape from a more uh, backdoor uh, point of view, I guess you could say. Training-wise, um, I took a course series uh, at the time for Universe. I think it was three courses. Uh, There's probably an expansion of different courses at this time, uh, but uh, my only training really in XR was Universe. And then let's talk about networking, because that's the biggest piece, I think, for me. Uh, my strategy was, I, I, I went crazy. I went to um, at least three, uh, over three, yeah, or three events per week. Um, so an event could be 
you know, a competition could be an event. Uh, you could go to a lecture, you can go to a webinar. Anything that had to do with the material and content for uh, XR, so AR, VR, MR, anything that had to do with that, go to and uh, just attend, listen, take notes, uh, especially uh, note who is there, who is presenting. Then try to get in contact with these people. Um, and it could be even people in the crowd. You know, I would actually engage with audience members uh, in the background. Uh, there's still a few platforms that let you do that and talk peer to peer, even while the presenter is talking. Um, it's quite fascinating to talk to people who in the background while you're listening to presentation. It's kind of like an organic way to break the ice. Uh, you don't have to worry about um, some of the things in real life where you have to like shake hands, you know, yourselves. Uh, really, really easy way to just chat with someone and then make a connection afterwards. Uh, so these events led to coffees, um, and these I specifically targeted XR professionals, and so these coffees were with 45 XR professionals. The intent I wanted to learn ordinaries and find patterns. Uh, I came from a more or less data analysis background with automotive, and I, I wanted to know like what it took and, and what exactly would be repeatable um, patterns with people's stories to get to their XR role. And then the channels that I took um, were Twitter, LinkedIn, Discord, Slack, and some of the virtual platforms I was talking about that would host the events. So any of these that everyone has access to, um, you know, they're all free, I didn't do anything paid. It was very, very, uh, I guess you could say grassroots level of engaging uh, personnel in the industry. Portfolio was, uh, I definitely highlighted the competitions I went to, and also extracurricular projects. So, even outside of XR, I had activities going on, um, and I did not hesitate to put those into write ups and then uh, also put them into some kind of way to present. Uh, a lot of complementary skills right, that other industries provide, and it could be not only job wise, but also volunteering wise. So, I they volunteering again because I did extra volunteering on the side for other initiatives that I feel very strongly about. And I'd write these up. And that level of this processing of what you're doing in life will be very helpful for anyone who's interviewing you as you get deeper into the interview pipeline, especially when they really look harder at your, at your work and who you are as a person. And then attitude. Um, I, I guess my mantra was leave no stone unturned. So that fits with the crazy amount of events I did every week. Um, you know, I when I saw something, I would just register, let the automation do its, do its work in the background. You know, put it in my calendar, I'll just show up. Uh, when I saw something, I would just you know make an effort. If I really couldn't do it, then fine. But I, you know, if I was really really trying to get a job, that was what I pushed myself to do. Just anything that I saw that could be tangentially related or related at all. I tried to go for. And then the in, quote unquote, was at the end of my uh, only six months, uh, probably into month five, uh, when things got more hot. Um, it was a personal connection. I had met an event. That ended up being my segue into a, a chat with the hiring manager, who uh, is my boss. Okay, so let's keep going. The next slide. So Adam talked about some of the uh, more portfolio uh, approaches. I'm going to talk about more of that data that I collected. So I had talked about previously that I had 45 people that I was able to engage with. So this is the tally of all 45, and it's informational interviews by position. Um, and I'm going to be categorizing them in terms of people I hit up. Out of the people I hit up, uh, 32 in orange were people that actually gave me advice. And then 13 ended up being just general chats. Uh, so that's uh, something I wanted to distinguish because general chats were, uh, they were helpful, right? It's really the people who gave me like hard, concrete advice that I would really benefiting from. And so on this um, chart, the y-axis is the tally of how many people, uh, or, or count of people, on the x-axis is the uh, what I categorized as their role or, or title that they did at their organization. 
we had founders that talked to me, uh, PMs, this could be a project or product manager. Um, it actually, it also includes a program manager. So PM is very, very inclusive of those, those uh, titles. Engineers, a uh, special category that's for Mozilla, Lifeboat, producers, professors, the this point it's one. So uni, salesperson, strategist, trainer, columnist, researcher, recruiter, chief revenue officer, expert. Uh, I think that was self-titled. <laughs> uh, UX designer, uh, technical artist, executive, and a specialist. Did this, it was all me, uh, with these individuals. We have time that this happened uh, is June 2020 to October 2020. Platforms used were Zoom, Google Meets. The source for where all these people came from were from Twitter, LinkedIn, Slack, applications even, uh, conferences, and referrals. Just realized that I don't have a laser pointer on me. Is that something we should activate? Uh, let's. I think that it might be a little bit too buggy with the synchronization. So, yeah, let's just let's stay off for today. Okay. Oh, this is the tally of all the people I talked to, and this is informational interviews by position. So now you're wondering, you know, talk to all these people. What kind of advice do I get? Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, let's talk about people who actually gave me advice. There's 32 people, right? So here's a pie chart, very simple. Uh, this is what I categorize as number one is given by type. Number one means might have given me a very, very large amount of words, you know, and when I talk to someone, you pick notes, and it's a lot of to condense. But I, when I went through all those notes for each person, I, I took away what's the number one, like the top thing that I could really learn from them. And I categorize these by type and lump them together. So we have one type is called development. So that's anything more technical related, like engineering, developer, uh, software kind of stuff. One type was publications, uh, how to publish things. Thank you with the mouse. And another one would be networking advice. So anything that has to do with communicating with others. Uh, one type was a little more introspective, defining. This has to do with defining yourself more. Another type was education, uh, learning opportunities. And then finally, there was one for competing. Well, let's go through development first. So this was uh, uh, a department of be hands-on, uh, learn community development, uh, learn development skills, a publication rise. It was write up thought processes, post work on social media, post why and how you did projects. Of course, here's the how you think kind of comes into hand. Let's see any projects, show off work in community, use your own stuff. This one was interesting. I remember because, you know, people can regurgitate in, let's say, retweet all the time, right? But what is it that makes you unique as an individual? And then, uh, yeah, there are some asterisks that were, for me, it was important because I was going for more of a managerial role, um, a PM role. So this was starred because this was exactly from a, a PM that gave me advice. So this was a ship software product. It's not enough. You want to get a PM role uh, to just talk about something. You have to do something and show that you've actually delivered. Uh, Networking-wise, uh, engage with LinkedIn recruiters. Network like crazy. Foster local relationships. Local could be anyone in your community. It could be someone that's in your actual communities too. It doesn't necessarily geographically uh, local. Have presence at industry events. Presence meaning just show up really and there and, and someone will notice that you're always there uh, all right keep showing up work as much as possible align with orgs and groups but that's really just making sure that you're part of communities uh, not just one that's looking in but all but someone who's inside and trying to do things and, and engaged planning creates your niche follow what feels good be distinct or be extinct it's an interesting tagline um, Really trying to hit home that if you aren't unique, you don't portray yourself as someone more unique, it's hard to stand out. Uh, and there's, of course, there's, there's strategies of how to do that with resumes, but there's also strategies come into play that are complementary with networking. Finding your strong suit. Uh, market yourself for your role. Uh, this one was interesting because it actually ties into hand with the last one, engineering your own job, uh, where someone actually told me, hey, if you don't see a role out there, it's okay. Like, 
you might like the company enough that you see yourself doing something that's not listed. And if you can really verbalize position to them, prove to them why you fit, uh, I, and something you take in hand when you talk to someone who has hiring power, get that idea in their mind. And be good at your own strengths. Uh, education. Uh, consume information like a vacuum. Comfortable with data. This was interesting because uh, it, it went in hand with the more technical side of things that XR is getting known for with more or less case studies and, and validations of how this technology works. It's important to understand the holistics of that data. Uh, go for experience first. Have a hacker mindset. Really interesting. That was very, very pertinent to especially a young industry like XR. And improve technical and speaking skills, right? That was important for someone who's in teams, who has to deal with both technical and personnel issues. And read newsletters. Uh, this one was actually really interesting for me because you get a lot of events, you can get a lot of news, you can get a lot of what's going on in the industry. So when you talk to someone, you're more confident about the state of XR. And the last one was compete. Just go compete. And, and uh, you know, Get your development skills uh, practiced. Uh, that was the pie chart. Um, so this is the breakdown of advice given by type. And as you can see, interestingly, majority was leaning just by count, uh, publications, networking, and defin defining. So what that told me was, you know, it's really important to know what you want and who you are. Then you want to say, okay, well. Now that I know who I am, how do I get it out there and how do I communicate it? And I love to use this analogy where you know you are the best restaurant in town. Everyone says so, your, your friends, but how do you attract someone to come to your restaurant? You don't know you get someone to your restaurant easily by just word of mouth. You, what happens is you list it on Yelp, list it on you know, forums, and you really start publicating and publishing and, and, and really communicating that you have a best restaurant in town. But unless you do that, take that step to get out of that shell, you're never gonna get noticed and become more successful. So that's what this is telling me. And let's see, I think that was the last, uh, right, besides this one, contact us. Oh, so Adam and I are both on LinkedIn. Uh, we. I wouldn't say religiously, but we do answer messages, and we like to fully engage with the students um, and the universe community. We're happy to do so. I have written up a few articles. I believe this is one of the original ones I took to kind of summarize uh, my journey. Uh, and, and you can see the old style of clicking business cards. I used to go to events. In the pandemic, as Nishkla said, I, I did not have that opportunity as much. Um, uh, but that's essentially the spirit of it. Just working and you know, getting name out there and knowing who's out there. <clears throat> and then uh, from time to time, I will engage with students who are exceptionally very, very, um, very driven to pursue uh, a role in this industry, and I will help them with one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're interested with that, you know, let me know. Um, that's really it. Uh, I think kind of want to talk to people more on an individual basis and uh, be great to take questions. Awesome. All right, everybody give some emojis to just first. Emojis, guys, thank you so much for coming and giving some awesome advice. It's great to kind of hear your first-hand account of it. And Justin, yeah, he's done a great job with... I remember reading this article too. It's uh, you, you get it to see it from like a first-hand account. Uh, especially this article was written a while ago. Um, XR, especially back then, was very new. There's a few differences between going through a traditional industry, you know, like a big tech firm, um, and then going into a kind of nascent industry, which was VR. Obviously, it's developed a lot, uh, but there is distinct differences between the recruiting processes for each. So um, it was really great to kind of see a firsthand account from Justin. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. So if you guys have questions and you're in alt space, press to raise hand button. And if you're on the live stream, drop a question in the live chat for Justin. All right, let's go to uh, one sec. Let's go to uh, okay, one more uh, thing, Nicholas. Yeah, go ahead. Before we get into questions, if you do yep. contact someone on LinkedIn, 
especially someone who is really busy. It's happened a lot when I was contacting people in leadership roles. Always send a message uh, with a note. Like when you hit when you hit that, was it connect or invite? There's an option to add a note. Do that, no matter what you do. Um, and there's a reason for that. When you're talking to someone who has uh, more or less hiring power or is always doing roles, they're really busy. So likely they're getting a lot of messages and a lot of invites uh, throughout the day. And let's say you met this person at an event, they probably had you know a swarm of people going after them and trying to get a job or a connection. You want to be able to distinguish yourself with the message. Um, say you know how you met them, uh, where is it that you want to, what is it you want to talk to them about? Anything that really lets them jogs their memory stands out from just a random person who's uh, getting an invite. Um, and that's happened to me too, where you know I've I want to talk to students, but I don't know where I've met this person from. Unfortunately, there are a lot of scammers out there, scammers and spammers. So always hit that note and add the notes. And especially if, you've, if you're here with this talk, a note. Oh, well, you listen then. <laughs> yep, no, that's a great point, yeah. I mean, yeah, you get probably overwhelmed with a lot of requests, and there has to be some sort of way for them to prioritize which ones they address, and that usually comes from do they have some sort of association with them? Someone introduced them. Um, so if you do end up reaching out, make sure to say where you found out about them from. Just say like, oh, seeing you at the universe event. So they have context in order to see whether that's someone they will engage with. Um, Tina, firsthand from the uh, investment end now. <laughs> um, okay, let's go to uh, John Z. <laughs> Hey, Justin, thanks so much, number one, for coming in. That was awesome. Um, I have a question based upon what you talked about this networking piece and the like the coffee and those. When did you start that part of your journey? Was it after you had been in the course for a while and you had some skills so you can actually talk about what you had to offer? Or was it more exploratory from the very beginning, even though you weren't maybe quite sure where you were going? Or would that feel too early to start to reach out in that way? One, starting today. I work with me first. I send that LinkedIn message, get started. Access the people that you're more comfortable with. Uh, you can even ask you know, your friends to recommend you someone to talk to and just get your feet wet. Um, your communication patterns improve over time, obviously, but how you practice engaging with someone really comes in hand, especially with a stranger. You want to start with people that you're familiar with first, and then exercise those vocal cords that are designed for um, really, you know, I would say cold approaching, essentially, in this case, right? You, it's not a very intuitive or natural thing for humans to do. Um, and the earlier you start, the better. Don't worry about knowing enough about the technical side of it. Uh, what's more important is that you're showing interest and you're eager and you're you're trying to offer yourself as someone who's um, a motivation and a direction. So um, other point of this is once you start networking, it's very easy to spot a leech, uh, someone who is just talking to you for a job. Right. So when you start working and, and talking to more people, don't go in um, that desperation. You might really want that. What's more important is that you start a relationship and foster that warmth. Uh, you know, make sure that you develop those skills because it's really off-putting. You're going in with, I want a job, I get it. That's why it's so important you start talking to people early on or you have that desperation. That's an awesome point, yeah. And and I have a question for on kind of going off that. I think a lot of a lot of times it's easy to just be like, okay, I'm going to submit a hundred applications, you know, through a cold resume drop. Um, what is, what's kind of your opinion on the success of that uh, versus like other channels and, you know, having to put more time into networking? I wrote about this in my article. Uh, I took an 80-20 approach. 80-20 is a big rule that carries across multiple things in life. Um, 80% of your time versus 20% of your time. I took 80% of my time networking and 20% of my time cold applying. I did that because uh, statistically speaking, cold applying through portals sucks. It goes nowhere. Occasionally, you might get a hit. Um, and that happens a lot more when you're 
the computer algorithms that are processing your resumes is a big reason they get tossed aside. They will spot um, people who are more experienced. So they get all the hits usually. If you're more, uh, I guess, more of a beginner, like I was, it's harder to get through the uh, computerized system. And also, what about the, like, for me, it's been also like a thought process of like, if you get like an intro through networking, it's more of a, like a warm or like powerful lead than just like you cold applying. It's kind of like, as you said, like nurturing that relationship uh, by applying through a cold outreach. It's almost like a weak signal for the recruiter that you didn't have another like better avenue to get into that position. Like, do you think that would apply or do you, do you have like maybe other thoughts on that? Yeah. I will say there were times that, you know, I, I definitely came off as desperate, I think, because, you know, there's positions where I didn't know anyone, but I just reached out to a recruiter. You know, that's something that happens. The majority of it, you definitely want to foster that warmth. You want to be able to talk with someone in industry, you know, because what happens is once you start engaging with them and they know you over time, you're active in the community, uh, maybe there's a spot that will all of a sudden pop up, a role that will, will show and they go, oh, uh, someone, you know, who is it that Chris or, uh, you know, uh, when he was talking to me, I remember that person and always really interested, wonder if they would fit and then maybe they'll reach out to you because they were engaging with you so much and they saw that you're doing great work, sharing your profile and networking and, and communicating your work. Uh, and she thought, oh, he or she thought, oh, well, that person would be great. And then so by the time you talk to them about it, oh, they've already got you in mind. Awesome. Okay, I, we're getting to the near end of the the 6 p.m. here. Before we break out to another world, does anyone have any last questions for Justin? Last questions. Now, I, I guess I have a last question. If not seeing any from the hand raises here, is like now from the kind of the other end, you know, working for a company, uh, considering hiring decisions. What are, what are some like you learned kind of new insights from being from that position, and what are some things that maybe weren't intuitive from when you were on the other side? Yeah. When we're hiring these days, uh, interestingly enough, um, resumes, you know, they're great, but what comes across is when you're talking to someone, it's it's really about the enthusiasm, it's really about the spirit of your candidacy, and it's really about you know, the go-to, go, go-getter attitude, and especially, uh, I'll talk from the context of the startup, the startups, they need people who um are comfortable with the fail fast fail hard attitude and and really trying to dig deep into the topics that are really challenging these days we're exploring things that one's ever been one's never done because xr is so new so really try to tailor your uh i would guess i don't want to say this but tailor your your spirit towards what the company is all about um, you know, like I was saying, the startup, show you're scrappy, show that you're, you're interested in getting nitty gritty in, in the weeds. For a larger corporation, it could be, you might want to look at the division you're applying to and figuring out, some you know, profiles of people who are already there and even potentially talking to them. What is it that they care about? The more you speak to that mission, uh, the higher likelihood that they'll process you through the pipeline uh, and to the later stages. Uh, those initial interviews are really important. I do a lot of those uh, when we have positions open. Um, and it's it's really important to have that cultural fit. Uh, you know, you can do all the technical work in the world, um, but if you can't speak to the mission, it's very, very hard uh, to be accepted. Because they know that, you know, inevitably, uh, I would say, personalities and works can, can leak into a workplace setting that you might, disparities and that causes a lot of friction so you want to be able to play on the right team that goes to the, the applicant too just to make sure that you actually like this team uh, you know not just applying for the sake of applying getting a job but applying to get a position that you'll enjoy and be able to thrive in for for quite a while awesome. okay i think we have one more question it looks like from the hand raises let's go to maddie Uh, Maddie, do you have a question? 
Not seeing any questions here. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, let's see. I think we should be good to go for uh, next portion. Okay, so I want everyone to give some emojis to Justin for coming up and giving the presentation. Uh, really appreciate you guys doing this for our students. This is, I think, the third or fourth time you guys have done it, and it's always one of the highlights of our program. Uh, students always come and tell me how much they appreciate it and how much value they got out of it. So we really appreciate you guys doing this. Um, and if you want to follow up with Justin, the LinkedIn will be posted on the YouTube live stream. Again, you add uh, or send a connection request, make sure to add a vote of relevancy. Then you saw him from the universe uh, conversation, why you'd like to discuss further, um, just because I'm sure they're inundated with a lot of different requests and need to be able to cipher out the important ones from the others. So um, yeah, emojis, everyone. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, it was a pleasure having you with us. If you're going to another world, okay. I have another minutes or so I can stick around. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm going to go do the raffle. Um, so yeah, we might be a little bit low on time, but feel free to stick around for as long as you can. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get back to the raffle here. Uh, so let me bring out my hologram and also move out the projector for now. Do some final announcements as well. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, is everyone hearing me clearly? Can I get some emojis? Everyone's hearing my audio clearly? Awesome. Okay, so final announcements, then we'll do the raffle, and then we'll portal off into our breakout world. So hopefully you've enjoyed the first two weeks so far. Uh, this Tuesday is going to be the enrollment deadline to submit the course fee in order to continue with the live 10-week course. Again, our policy is once you take it once, it's free forever, and you'll have lifetime access to the material as well. Uh, something that I didn't mention in today or previous, uh, or during the record during the recording is that we do have a full pipeline option. So if you get all the courses at once, you get $1,000 off. Tony's going to post a link to that in the live chat. It's also on our website. We also have scholarship and payment options available through PayPal's pay and for system. All right, so those are both options you can find on our website. Again, that's tryuniverse.com. It's a link above. I hope you guys can join us. If you have questions after the session on our website, there's also a chat bot on the bottom right. I will be monitoring and help you guys out with anything. Uh, but I hope to see you guys for our next class, which will be Saturday at 4 p.m. And that will be a private class reserved to those that do enroll in the course with us. Okay, so that said, I want to move on into the raffle for today. Uh, and maybe take some questions after. The way the raffle is going to work is I'm going to call out the winner for the raffle. If you're in alt space, you need to come down to the bottom of the stage to claim your prize. If you're on the live stream, you need to say here so we can indicate or see who's there and we'll ask to validate that identity by sending us an email. All right, so if you're not here, we're going to give it to the next person. Okay, so make sure you make yourself known and we can see you and identify you as the winner. Okay, so. Uh, can I get an emoji drum roll, please, from both the live stream and alt space? Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and announce the winner. So the winner for our raffle is Mike C. Is Mike C here? Mike C, again, if you're on the live stream, come down or drop a comment. If you're in alt space, come down to the bottom of the stage to identify you. Not here, we're going to go to the next person. Awesome. It looks like Mike is here. Everyone give some emojis to Mike. Emojis, everyone. Congratulations. Uh, Mike, we're going to follow up with the email uh, with the steps to get set up. Awesome. Congratulations, Mike. Okay, well, now we're going to portal off into one of our student-made worlds. You can come up and ask any questions. Uh, ask our instructor, Jeffrey, over here. Uh, Justin, I might have to head out at six, so we'll see if he could stay for a little bit. If not, uh, just come up to either Justin or, or either Chris or myself, or feel free to explore the world. I'll be talking more about how metaverse development happens here in this platform. Go through some examples of editing uh, the world itself. Okay, so I'm going to drop the portal. Um, if you click on the blue orb, you'll be able to join us. Let me go ahead and get that out. All right. 
Once you click on the blue orb one, do not click on it again. All right, click on the little blue orb, everybody. Awesome. I do see some past students here with us as well. So there's also uh, Kalima over here. And I also see Jim, great to see you guys. Uh, so if you have any questions also from a student perspective as well, uh, they're repeat students. Hopefully they'll be open to take questions. Um, yeah, and we'll go ahead and go over here, kind of move into more of a breakout style room. So make sure to click on the blue orb. Once you click on it, don't click on it again. I'm gonna stay behind with my VR avatar, drop a portal for anyone that's missing. We have everyone here. I think we're missing a few, but again, I'll stay back in case we're missing anyone. I'm also gonna try and friend request those that are not on the portal. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump in in three, two. Everyone, come meet me over on the dance floor. I'll be in the hologram over here. And we'll go ahead and do a breakout. Uh, so one sec. Everyone should be hearing my audio. Uh, let's kind of get everyone organized. All right, I'm just going to uh, let's see who is with us. I'm over by the dance floor over here. Okay, I'm just hearing some background audio. Oh, let's see. Where is uh, Jeff over here? Let's see. Okay. So we're going to kind of sanction off the rooms. Justin is going to be in the top balcony. So if you follow me over here, if you look at my avatar, he's going to be over here. So if you want to talk to Justin, again, he was the one presenting. He's going to be on the top floor by the arcade games. So you can go up to there to talk to Justin. Uh, if you want to talk to Jeff, who's our instructor and also is a senior pipeline engineer at Nike as well, uh, he'll be over here on this portion of the room. Uh, Chris, so you come over here. And then I'll be by the hologram if you have questions for myself. Uh, Kalima is also a past student. I don't know if she's open to take some questions, but uh, she could also hear from her perspective. She'll be by the kind of lounge area over here at the entrance. Okay, so we're at different quarters. Go up to who you like to talk to, and then, um, yeah, I'm going to go off megaphone now, and you should be able to go and start your own conversations. Okay, let's talk to you guys soon. Hey, guys. And live stream people, if you have questions for me, drop them in the live chat. I can help with them as well. Hey, everyone. Yeah, if you, ha uh, if you have any questions for me, you could just uh, go ahead and say them. We don't have uh, hand raises here. Hey. All right. I... Um, oh, 
was wondering, oh, should I go ahead and I just try and download a different well, um, 2020.3? Because I, I uninstalled it, but for some reason, the application for Visual Studio, um, I have an error code on it, and I'm not able to remove it. Mm. Oh, well, what's the error code? Oh, um, I don't remember. Okay, I think I'm sorry. Us, if you could send us a screenshot on um, Discord, we could take a look. But yeah, I think the the issue it would probably not be the Unity version. You could try a different one if you like. Um, it's most likely huh. just the the setup, but the air would probably be best for us to figure out what's going on. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Um, other questions for me, guys? Let me see the live stream if there's questions as well. Questions for me? You could just go ahead and blurt them out, I just because we're having a bunch of different combos. All right, not seeing questions. Okay, if not, we can go. Okay, let's see. I'm I kind of have a question. question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering... <laughs> For me, I guess my biggest struggle right now is just figuring out what I want to work on as far as my personal project goes. Um, would it be wrong yeah. or like too hard for me to work on multiple? Um, like something that would work for my career versus something that would fit better with, you know, metaverse as far as like games yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so we talked more about this in the first course, but personal project we recommend really for the first course doing something that's focused on the learning so we have students that are like very first course they want to build a vr app um and build something really intricate and what ends up happening is they overwhelm themselves and get burnout so you really should be focusing on something that is you could accomplish within that 10 weeks that's simple and going over like key c sharp and unity 3d concepts and then build those schools and if you have time you accomplish that base level then work on something more complex you're going to be building a lot of VR apps in the later courses. The second course, you build seven worlds here in Altspace, Metaverse Worlds. And the third and fourth course, you work with a team of two to three on a VR app. And you eventually publish the Oculus App Lab score. So you don't want to rush yourself in your development. And at the beginning, especially focus more on the learning outcomes rather than the product itself. You could be a good builder too. Uh, let's see. Any other questions for me, guys? If not, I can talk more about Altspace world building here. I hate to interrupt you, but I think Jason's up there. He can't speak. He's trying to talk, but he can't communicate. Oh, okay. I'll go ahead and give me one sec, guys. I'm going to fly over. She can do it. You could do it, too. Yeah. I have a VR kit on. Going on. Okay. Do you have a PC? No. So, uh, how long have you guys been on? Kinky. So, you have your PC experience about this. Are you? I'm sorry. That we, uh, getting getting this skill, that's quality leaders to understanding oh. NFT. What? It's good meeting you. That's not my question. That's what I mean you do. So do you understand me? You hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? You have to speak. You have to speak a little okay. slower. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Now, if you yeah. happen to under get this okay, cue, <laughs> uh, this will you will that lead you to understanding NFT? Uh, ability okay. to develop NFT yourself. Is it possible? Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't Should. ignoring you. Sure. Huh? Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So yeah. all this it covers yeah. NFT related everything what we studying here. Will it? Oh, yeah, it would, um, it, it would eventually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, eventually. Right it, now, it, this it, is... It's really about the 3D... Okay, let me... And, and trying. It's, it's, and learning, and learning yeah, how okay. to edit and, and, and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I've, 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 been, I've been in all space uh, for a little while. But... Do you have any questions about... Um, for the um, whole time I've been, I've program, been to different rooms and stuff like that. And I've been talking to some people who have created some of the rooms I, and um, worlds. Can you hear me? Sorry, I can't. I'm like, yeah. So they just I'm give me some it. tips okay, on I I what I should how, how to look into. Mm -hmm. Roy, you start that. You have to roll. I I didn't charge my VR headset. So you have busy experience, huh? And it, okay. Um, kind of I I I only do like um the basic stuff, like um fix my room. 
and use templates okay. to, um, to, to, to build rooms that I like. Okay, self study. Yeah. But right now you're fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Guys, any, any questions so, for me? If not, I could talk about kind of the metaverse process uh, within this room, for example. Class? Any questions for me before we jump into that? Um, Lake was uh, just talking okay. about world building, I, I was asking a question like rooms and stuff. Yeah. Huh? Good. Anything we learn from this program, will it equally cover the skill of understanding NFT? Will it? Yeah, so for this program, we have five courses right now and we're launching new courses. There's four courses that are focused on VR development and metaverse development. Um, so VR, AR, UD development, those are what those four courses focus on. You just launched a new course, Blender, which is 3D modeling, that's launching in June. We're working towards a new course that we're launching, which is NFT development. Uh, so that course is coming later. Um, so these courses are focused on metaverse development, this program here. As AR development and Unity development, and then the new course we're launching, Blender, in June is 3D modeling, and the next course we'll be launching after that is NFT development. So the pipeline here will be focusing more on metaverse creation, um, and the NFT course is yet to be announced. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. Other questions for me, guys, or I could talk about kind of alt space world building. Any questions? Done a great oh yeah so someone asked on the live stream this is a student so this world is made by artsy so this is a student made world uh artsy came and talked to our students this thursday uh, she was the one i referenced that went through the first two courses started with an artistic background without any unity or programming experience and then went through the courses started building worlds for clients both consumer and enterprise got a three a month contract at the oasis that eventually converted full time which is an awesome company that raised three uh, four million uh, for the series a so um but this is a world she would make so she would make these worlds like the one you see around you she would also model them and blend it from the ground up and then she would sell and license these worlds to clients for them to use for their own events concerts as this world for example uh and breakout sessions yeah. nice cool thanks very much and she's built like most of the world. Um... So, yeah, so, okay, yeah, so RC, you can identify Just as, uh, uh, as uh, I don't want to mispronounce the, the name there, but yeah, a lot of the worlds you'll see, yeah, a lot of the worlds you'll see in Altspace were made by RC, which is a really big on the community. Um, so if you, you can identify her worlds by saying made with RC, I believe it was at the beginning, and then people will use those same mm -hmm. worlds for a bunch of different events uh, and whatnot. Um, yeah, so basically, let's see. we don't have a skybox here, but um, there's things you could add within Altspace. So you can add things using the Unity engine, which is really what she does. She builds the models in 3D in Blender, and it imports them into Unity, and then uploads that scene into Altspace. So Altspace also has their own native uh, building tools. So you could, for example, bring in assets here. So let's see if I can bring in some assets as an example. Uh, let's see, you could bring in like an apartment building, you could position it and scale it in and be early move my hologram maybe over there for now. So you could place assets here and then you could also using these kind of kit assets, build your own uh, space while you're in VR as well. Um, and I could talk about the benefits and kind of downsides of doing that. Uh, we get like a cloud over here. So for placing things, it makes it much easier to do. Uh, so let's do like cloud here. But um, in terms of being able to bring these kind of worlds you create to different platforms, it's very limited within Altspace because once you create content here, you can't export that world unless you make it in Unity to another Metaverse platform. And that's why we teach Unity because you're allowed, you can kind of build that same template world and export it to a, either different Metaverse platforms or build it for other platforms like iOS or Android uh, or uh, Windows or uh, Oculus. Um, so you basically are able to take that same template world you built and build it to multiple Metaverse platforms to get the maximum user base. Let's see if I could find another um, another kind of effect here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try and get a particle effect. So these are kind of 3D assets. You can also get stylized effects. See if I'll get like the flash here. 
You can like also position effects as well. You should be seeing like a green flash occurring. If we were outside, we'd also be able to change the skybox, which is basically a 360 image wrapper around the world. Uh, this is like a world with a ceiling, so you can't see it here. I think there's an outside over there. We can maybe check it out a little bit later. There's like a little balcony area. Um, yeah. Uh, what else did I want to show? Oh, yeah. So the downside of, yeah. Um, so you could build that same template. You could build that same template world in Unity and then deploy to those different platforms. With Unity, the only thing you have to check for all space handles the interactions when you build it from Unity to uh, alt space, but the things that will change as you build like a VR app, which you, we teach you how to do, and you want to export the VR app to like iOS or Android or PlayStation, is the interactions from the user end. So obviously the inputs from a user for uh, VR are going to be different from the inputs from a user for uh, PlayStation. You know, PlayStation, you're going to, or like an iPhone. For iPhone, you're going to have to program your interactions to be responding to touch, while VR uses controllers. Basically, to change your application from the user interaction perspective, uh, which is really like a programming task, it's still the same kind of template and particle effects and animations and shaders you use uh, should be able to go across those different platforms. The only thing that will change is when you have different inputs, you'll need to program uh, interactions specific to those inputs. Okay, uh, other questions. Yeah, the student made world, credits artsy. Yeah. We go into the building. This yes, this is the building. Oh, this building here. Uh, this one has colliders on it. If it was a more detailed building, you could, but I don't think this one has an interior. It's more for an environment asset. Yeah. Uh, other questions for me, guys? When, when you build um, in the next thing, when you're building worlds here, is it, do you make them in Unity and then import them, or are you yeah. building them in this platform? Yeah, so you, we teach you how to do both, but we really don't recommend um, building full worlds in alt space. Uh, for one, you're tied to the platform, so you can't export those worlds, which is really dangerous, especially if a platform goes under or doesn't have the user base you want. So we focus on teaching Unity development and just use alt space as a prototyping tool. So we're not teaching alt space development in this thing for us. We're teaching Unity development and VR development, but just using alt space as a prototyping tool to share your worlds with the class. Um, so we teach specifically Unity development in that second course. And we just kind of go through your world as like a magic tour bus kind of style at the end to kind of check out the best ones and get the student's perspective on the development of doing these worlds. So do our, our guests Throughout these classes or courses that you have taught, do you regularly take the student build worlds and um, put them into alt space, or is that something that we have the option to say yes or no to? Well, that's something that we te we teach you how to do that. So basically, we teach you there's a alt space Unity plugin. It's a plugin that integrates within alt space uh, within Unity uh, that allows you to build and upload your templates into alt space to be able to explore them. On this metaverse platform and that the same kind of process works for other metaverse platforms like vr chat they're basically plugins to the unity engine to allow exporting into their platform okay that's pretty cool so like i could create like my own little unique world that i could also transport into yeah vr chat matter yeah. okay wow that's, that's the amazing benefit. That's if you want to create your own brand yeah, exactly. And that, that's the, the reason why we teach Unity is the phrase build once, deploy everywhere. And that's really why it becomes so popular is it you're having everything in one core engine instead of what's traditional development where you have to build everything specific to an operating system. If you're an Android developer, you build an app for Android, you basically have to re rebuild it completely when you want to deploy it to iOS. But if you build an app within Unity, it's uh, platform agnostic. So you can deploy that same app two different platforms now you have to change the interactions for those platforms and maybe some will have like unique um kind of functions that you need to integrate but the environment the scene the animations the particle effects in some cases some of the interactions will translate uh fairly easily now like does that would that apply also to like the app lab can that like or would that be different so the, yeah, Oculus App Lab is a <laughs> tool by Unity to allow independent developers to distribute their applications easily. Um, so that's what we teach you how to do to publish apps on there. Um, but yeah, that runs for, since it's the Oculus App Lab, it runs for Oculus headsets. Uh, the interaction toolkit we use, which is the SDK we teach in the third and fourth course, is the Unity XR interaction toolkit. 
And that's an XR toolkit, so that means the interactions you build work for both AR devices like the Magic Leap headset and the Microsoft HoloLens headset, and also VR devices like the Oculus Quest, HTC Vive, exactly. Valve Index, exactly. Windows Mixed Reality headsets, and et cetera. Other questions what for me, guys? I have a lot of time and a lot of money in there. You can do alt space completely. I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it restricted from switching um, different platform? If you develop from here, I want to switch other uh, platform. Are they restricted by digital right or something like that? Yes, yeah, so if you want to, uh, if you have your application in Unity you, and you want to switch platforms, it's a matter of just changing a setting in the deployment. Uh, to that different platform, and then if, you, if they have different inputs, and you're going to have to change the interactions for those inputs, so it's more on the programming end. But the idea is that it's much easier to do that yeah. Unity engine, where that's where all your content development is, instead of having to use a specific operating system development, which is non-translatable to other uh, other platforms. Okay. And a question, I think. Yeah, help me. Um, I sent. I actually paid for the full pipeline like a week and a half ago because <laughs> I'm like, I'm in. Um, oh, awesome. Okay. Uh, but you had. Uh, I think you. Had, I think yeah. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Help me, Kyle. I sent a message to you like on on the website. Um, yep. I I went through and um, however I didn't receive a a any any emails concerning about actually signing up. They're saying that the link that, that the automation wasn't set up yet, but that I should receive that email. I haven't received one yet. Um, or I don't think I have. I, I, I've received so many emails for you, a universal bar, like, <laughs> I might have overlooked it. So, um, is that something that you guys are going to see, or is this, or, 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 or send soon before Tuesday, or, or when? Yeah, or, send or, us. Or, um... Yeah, it, it might have got lost. If you if you go to our website, tryyours.com, there's a chat bar on the bottom right. Just paste your email, and we'll send an email uh, if I need to Google Classroom. The, okay, so in order to enter the Google Classroom, everyone's going to get invited, but in order to enter, you need to use a Gmail. That's an email that ends at at Gmail. It can't end in like at your workplace or at your school. Uh, so that's the end okay. of at Gmail, but everyone's going to be invited to that. Okay, yeah, because yeah, cause all spaces at, at, my, at my Gmail, but I've been putting my, 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 my um, company that I own, I've been, I've been using that many for like the raffle, like that. Okay, so yeah. let's, go, let's go to the chart, chart and put in my Gmail, which is my... For the Google Classroom, I am registered under the, my Gmail. Oh, okay. Oh wait. Oh, so you are you are in the Google Classroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am in the Google Classroom, okay. but, but I signed up yeah. for that before I paid for the pipeline. So so I so okay. so I'm already in there uh, and everything. But then, like I said, we could have to actually go ahead and and uh, right, purchase right. The, the the pipeline. But I didn't get right, the, right. any confirmation email saying that I was part of the I was actually registered. So just 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 yeah, the, okay. just the uh, purchase confirmation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got you. Well, well, yeah. Send the email again. We'll send uh, the confirmation. It was because probably we were using a Shopify system. We yep. set up for the first time, so the automations weren't set up for that new system. But we'll send the the confirmation to you. You send the email in the okay. live chat. How busy I get with Ray? Cool. That's the chat on the on the website. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. From. Yeah. How will we uh, go about? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. I was just wondering, or forgot, how we go about getting the um, one hour um, session with the tutor? Uh, okay, so uh, so there's two ways. We have uh, office hours that we hold after classes. Um, that's usually led by Chriso. Obviously, uh, today is a little bit unique because we're just breaking out for a while. Um, but after classes on Saturdays, we have that kind of breakout in the Discord. If you still need <clears throat> additional help beyond just like, you know, text help on Discord throughout the week, live classes on Saturday, and then Chriso afterwards on Discord, um, we do offer live one-on-one -on -one packages that we could like schedule with you. Uh, but that's only if you kind of need like, you know, really like uh, kind of in-depth help from our end. And that's on our website as well. Okay. Yeah, just try Universe and then the, under the courses page. Um, yeah. Other questions for me, guys? Questions for me? Awesome. Okay, I'm glad you guys got to hear from students. I encourage you to do like some research online to see what we're about. Uh, so there's like information about us from all different sources. On there's some on Reddit. Uh, there's some on Trustpilot. There's some on our Facebook page. Uh, there's some reviews on our website. Um, so feel free to like do your own research about us. Uh, we've had a lot of great experiences from our students um, who 
hopefully you've written good things about us, but um, yeah, we're confident that you can do your own research <laughs> and come to a decision. Um, but yeah, we hope you guys can join us on our next class and take this journey with us, learning VR development. Uh, you got to hear from some of our students today. Hopefully you'll get to form relationships with not only our alumni, but students within your own cohort. That's really what we focus on. It's, it's that community aspect and relationship building, which is so important to getting job placement. And our kind of job is to get you prepared for those next opportunities. Um, and as Justin said, it's not something you should just wake up one day and do. It's something you should be doing as you go through the courses. Justin got his job you know, midway through the third course. Adam got his job after the second course. RC got a job after the second course. It's, it's something you don't want to just wait till the end and then do. It's something you should be doing as you go through the pipeline uh, and working on. So be proactive. Um, reach out to us and the community for anything you need. And we try and facilitate those kind of opportunities that are in for you. Um, either our private job listings that we get when we have projects coming in from enterprise clients that need us to build stuff and give you that work experience kind of apprenticeship program. And then also from community members that are now working in these companies like Justin that we're describing and others that basically now looking for internal hires need kind of recommendations using our internal data we have on our student performance. So um, we really pride ourselves on being more of that community aspect in addition to the training because we see that be such a huge driver for hiring decisions in the industry. Um, awesome. Okay. So I think we're good to go. Uh, if you have, if you have any additional questions, drop them in the live chat on our website. Again, Tuesday is going to be the enrollment deadline to continue into the next meetup. Uh, so I hope you guys can join us there. That's going to be on our website. It's also material under the, uh, course payment assignment and yeah, enjoy your metaverse travels today, guys. I hope to see you guys at our next private class Saturday and, uh, yeah, safe travels. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Leslie, did you say, um, so you were, were you talking about building, did you say something about being a psychiatrist? Was that you? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So are you thinking in the realms of like writing like um, treatment within uh, VR? So I would love to, I just don't know, um, you know. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff like the HIPAA privacy and then um, oh, wow. yeah, I'm actually and things like that. But yeah, it's I've looked actually looked into that. So my girlfriend's a therapist. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a re researcher at UCLA, um, oh, cool. and so I've been writing grants, also kind of geared to VR and and thinking about you know what all that yeah. looks like. I've mm -hmm. also I went to a conference uh, about a month month and a half called uh, put on by C Senior Cyanide XR. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you go to that conference? In real life? No, but I, I follow them a lot. They're, they seem like they have a lot of innovative stuff going on. They do, yeah. So it was actually a virtual a virtual this year. Okay. I think next year it's going to be in L.A. I'm in L.A., so that's mm -hmm. easy. But, um, yeah. yeah, there really isn't a platform. Part of, the, part of the reason why there isn't is because, so if you look at um, Quest's Terms of Service, it doesn't uh, allow it, right? It right. can only be for like well-being, not like medical services. And so right. the current model is a very expensive model where people essentially, they have the headset and then they have the software and it's currently like, so anything that's medical wise, then it's, it's done that way. Um, yeah. Personally, I don't think that's sustainable, right? So No, it's um, also kind of crazy, but... <laughs> I mean, I think it there's is. so much you yeah. can get out of it. But the other thing that we do yeah. is teach students and residents. Um, and then, you know, documentation is so boring. I would love to have like bean bags and you throw it at depression versus psychosis so that you can write your notes while you're getting exercise. <laughs> yeah, there's some interesting companies out there that are kind of, I think, you know, trying to do that, like mental health and things like that. There's, you know, I mean, there's yeah. a ton of VR start startups, whether or not they'll be good at it. I don't know. Yeah. I know that some, there, there was one provider, a clinical psychologist who was doing some stuff, um, like, uh, for anxiety. Right. So if you look at the literature, uh -huh. like, um, phobias is, is yeah. you know, pretty, yeah. can be done in and VR. And pain is a big one. And, um, we have a, uh, medication assisted treatment clinic. I'm, I'm, I'm with so a community mental health center, so we're, you know, we have, um, 
I'm a substance use researcher, so I'm very familiar okay. with medicated assisted Perfect. treatment for opioid yeah. use disorder, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's in fact my work, right? So I'm very interested nice. in, in VR research, treating substance use disorders. Um, yeah, and well, we're actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're starting a pilot. We have a detox program and we're slowly starting a pilot where um, we're going to try to see what the course of the of the detox is like if people need less meds um if they're doing meditation first because it's 